The following is a special holiday presentation. Happy New Year from ABC Sports. In the world of magic, college football's player of the year has his eyes focused on another Ohio State victory. But looking over his shoulder is the sensational sophomore from Tennessee. In this land of fantasy, whose dream will come true as we begin the new year? Somehow, we don't think this is what the Chamber of Commerce had in mind when they invited you to Orlando, Florida and the Comp USA Citrus Bowl. Happy New Year, everybody. We've got a dandy of a matchup. The Buckeyes of Ohio State and the Volunteers of Tennessee. Nice to have you along with us with Dick Vermeil. I'm Brad Musburger. Dick, Happy New Year, partner. Yeah, and uh, same to you, buddy. Peyton Manning and Eddie George. Eddie George, this year's Heisman Trophy winner. And of course, Peyton, a leading candidate for next year. We got so many offensive stories here. Let's start with the Buckeyes. Well, there's more than Eddie George, a Heisman Trophy winner. There's the number one offensive lineman in the country, Lombardi Ward winner, Lo Lo uh, excuse me, Orlando Pace, over 300 pounds, and can he block? The Blitnikoff winner in Terry Glenn. I mean, it's a great player, and yeah, they have all the weapons. And Bobby Hoying, number two rated quarterback in the country. They have it all. But before you think, that the Buckeyes have all the yeah, weapons. They don't. Take a look at Tennessee's offense. Oh, uh, Peyton Manning, young sophomore, plays a quarterback position like a senior. Over 300 pass attempts, Brent. Four interception throws, 22 touchdowns. Jay Graham, a record-breaking 1,400-yard rusher. And Joey Kent, an SEC leading receiver. Good tools. No question that the weather is going to be a huge factor here this afternoon. When we come back, Jack Aru will tell us what equipment changes have been made by both these teams. The kickoff in a moment. Ready now for the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl between Ohio State and Tennessee. And let's check in with Jack Arood on the field conditions, Jack. Well, Brent, it's raining so hard. Forget the umbrella. We're going with the liquid sunshine. But, you know, normally in pregame festivities, they're part and parcel to every holiday bowl. Not here today. The Comp USA Citrus Bowl officials, because of the rain and trying to save the field, what they've done, they canceled all the pregame festivities. Now, here's the problem with the footing. See the water? Well, what each of the teams have done is they've gotten rid of what they call the molded cleats and gone to the screw-on cleats. They're trying to get better footing. Here's the problem with the footing. Does it favor the offense or the defense? Well, one thing to remember, when you go to make a cut, We've seen players already begin to slip, not be able to make it real effectively. So if you're on offense, you know where you're going. If you're on defense, you're not quite sure. Jack, one thing is sure. As we look at this, history in the making as the good folks here in Orlando celebrate the 50th anniversary of this classic. And here are the two highest ranked teams in Florida Citrus Bowl history and the first Heisman Trophy winner. Eddie George appearing today in a Citrus Bowl against Tennessee and freshman Jeff Hall from Winchester, Tennessee. Demetrius Stanley and Sean Springs are back deep. There's Demetrius. But the fellow they want to handle the ball as much as possible is number 24, Sean Springs. Let's see how Tennessee tees it up to start the game. A short kickoff. Springs on the run. He has got it at the 18-yard line. Springs down at the 30. So a record-breaking matchup of quarterbacks, running backs, and wide receivers here today. Bobby Hoyne will bring the Buckeye offense out for the first series of the game. 
Number 14 from St. Henry, Ohio. This is his last game as a Buckeye. An extremely impressive number is what you have to like about Bobby. He got better and better each year. Eddie George, we don't have to tell you about all the honors he's won. Nicky Sualua will set up in front of him. He'll be the fullback trying to clear the way. And, of course, Bolitnikov winner Terry Glenn on the outside. And we get set to go. Rushman show for Tennessee. Two backers right behind him. Point goes to the air. Sulalua up ended at the 31-yard line by Raymond Austin, the strong safety out of Lawton, Oklahoma. The big offensive line, and if you're looking for an advantage on an off track, you look for the big fellas like Orlando Pace, the Lombardi winner. Only one senior in that talented group. Jamie Sumner will not be back. Matched against this defense, Gallion, the leading tackler for the Volunteers. But folks, keep an eye on number one. See if Little can get off the marks. He's the left defensive end. They work a trick with him, and they swallow up the Heisman Trophy winner. <laughs> Defensively, in that backfield, Deron Jenkins is a major league cover corner. Number 18 for the Volunteers. You'll be seeing him throughout the day. All right, Mr. Vermeil, you're Victor Keys. All right, eat up the clock. The Buckeyes control the ball, attack that lighter defense, home run to Glenn. Tennessee plays a lot of single coverage on the corners, get the home run to him, and defense, make them go the hard way. It's an explosive offense. Make them run a lot of plays before they score. They're going to score some points. This is third and nine. And you can see how balanced they are with Hoyne and George. They're two superstars. He'll put it up here. Needs nine yards over the middle. Well short to Glenn. They got it into Glenn's hands. That's three and out. So here comes a young man who grew up about 15 miles from the Citrus Bowl. That is Brent Bartholomew, number 41, who will punt it away. Full scholarship player out of the state of Florida. Signed on as the punter. Tennessee believes before the day is over, they can get a rush on him and perhaps get a piece of a punt. I'm not sure that they'd want to start out that way. I think they'd be happy just to get the ball and see what they got going with Terry Fair, the defensive back from Phoenix, Arizona. They're a very good punt return, return team, Brent. Very good punt return team. They better be. That's a whale of a punt. <laughs> I'm telling you, folks, happy homecoming. Get it, get it, hurry, hurry. Oh. Coming out on the 20 uh, yard. Almost got it. If he could have gotten there and stopped that from breaking the plane, first down on the one-inch line coming out. Great punt, and he's upset. Should have had a sprinter right there, but he fell down, as you saw, to the right side of your screen. Look at him crawl. Get up and run. Don't crawl. <laughs> That's a special <laughs> team crawl. Yeah. Keep going. Keep mutting. Got to do it. Got to do it. But well, here's our young man, Peyton. Manning, what a sensational story. Look at the number of interceptions, folks. That's what to focus on with him. Peyton simply does not make mistakes. Now, Jay Graham, we rave about George, but Jay Graham is the record setter. And Knoxville, they set up behind the fullback. They bring the tight end, they load the left side, and they will bring Graham there, and Graham's got a crease. Now, certainly Tennessee saw the same thing you did when Michigan lined up against this Ohio State defense and took them on. This offensive line, centered by Jeff Smith, believes they can open the way for Graham. Now, they're not saying that Graham's going to come on for 300 yards on this track, but they'd like to get well over 100 with him against this defense. Best be careful of number 94, Rabel, defensive player. Defensive lineman of the year in the Big Ten. He's a whale of a story. He'll be back next year. Graham again stretches, cut back to the 30-yard line and close to a first down, Dick. So here's Sean Springs who heads up this defensive backfield. The two safeties, they're very thin back there. Yes, they left the safety home. He and Damon Moore and Shea Bryant is not academically it. Tough on him. Victory keys here. Protect Peyton's place. He's an excellent passer. They've only given up 14 sacks all, see all year. Protect like that now. Graham, don't turn the ball over. In the big loss against Florida, they turn the ball over. And they've got to stop the Heisman. They've got to stop Ohio State's running game. A first down run. A fake by Mayton. And Peyton throws it out using his tight end for about seven yards that time. 
They put Scott Piper out there and tossed it to him, Coach. They, they wanted to go deep to that young, young, fast tight end, Dustin Moore. Coverage took it away, and they had to lay it off. You'll see this to the top of your screen. You run a nice play action. The tight end will come off. There's the wing back. He gets a block. The tight end went to the right side of the screen. He's just a layoff guy. Good coverage downfield. Now they come up in that zone defense and make the tackle. Second down and three. Chester Ford, the fullback, continues to set up in that straight eye. So they're just running straight ahead, and now it'll be third and short. Kevin Johnson, the junior linebacker from Athens, Georgia. A young man who was a JC player before he signed on with Ohio State. David Cutler, the offensive coordinator for Tennessee, said they plan to use the tight ends on the line of scrimmage, which they've already demonstrated in this first series. They normally play the tight end off the ball and the wide receiver on the ball. They're putting him up there so he can get in a better blocking position on these Ohio State defensive ends. See what Manning can come up with here in third and three. The quick toss. Go to the first down. Major league hit by Sean Springs. By far one of the finest defensive backs in the country, and certainly the best defensive back on that Buckeye team. The volunteer coach is very aware of him. Well, because of Sean Springs, David Cutler, the offensive coordinator, said we we're going to try to stay away from him a little bit and work to the inside against the linebackers and safety. This time on a third down situation, they're in a man to man. He's on him all the way. And what a great tackle. Good technique. And this young man right here making the tackle is going to have his ankle operated uh, as soon as the season's over. Brenda has some calcium. And they did get it. They got a favorable spot on that. Monster hit by Springs, but advantage Manning in Tennessee. That's a case where an official is left guessing. After Springs knocked the receiver back so far, he just simply had to guess where the forward progress was stopped that time. Now they go one back with Graham. Three wide receivers. Tackling to the 44 yard line, and Philip Fulmer, the head coach over there, who has done an outstanding job with the Volunteers. He said they worked in Tennessee at home very fiscal to try to toughen up his football team, but when he got him down here, he backed off on him. A year ago, a couple years ago, it's Tennessee uh, played Penn State here, Brent, and they felt they played a little bit higher. So he backed off on him to send them in this ball game fresher. Yeah, and then of course the Comp USA Citrus Bowl after that matched Ohio State and Alabama, which was the game here last January first. Now second down. They need six yards for a first down. They're audibling against this bare front. This odd defense. Manning. Oh. Incomplete and almost intercepted. Almost wound up in Ty Howard's hands. Greg Cotter just could not get that ball put away correctly and if they get the ball in that man's hands he can fly Connor is a tremendous athlete he's a great sprinter he's a long jumper over 25 foot you're throwing to the right guy Cooper is another guy that really backed off really backed off went one a day this time last year he lost in the Citrus Bowl he went two a days banged him up a little bit this time he said we go single practice sessions and back him off and let him have a little more fun I think any coach with a 1-5 bowl record would start to make a change new. yeah Third down and six. <laughs> You're tough. Blitz. Manning sprints away from it to the left and completes the pass. Short of the first down. They need to reach midfield, but that was excellent quarterbacking by Peyton Manning. He didn't throw a touchdown that time, but you look at his ratio. Every 17th attempt, what is a nice stat, though, is every 95th attempt he throws the interception. Unbelievable way Tennessee punting. Tennessee coverage team is excellent. They've only given up five, over a little over five yards of punt return to their opponent with a 13 long. Great speed in their coverage teams, and they get very good hang time. Stanley back. Not a good punt. We have seen.
seen one high scoring game after another. The trend may be changing here. The Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl matching Ohio State and Tennessee as we begin 1996. Bobby Hoyne, the Big Ten quarterback of the year and one of a handful of outstanding quarterbacks. When you take a look at the senior quarterbacks. Tackle over formation, Brent. Both offensive tackles on the same side that time. George running behind him for a couple of yards. Let's go down to Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, Coach Vermeil was talking about the change in coaching philosophy for this bowl game. Well, you know, the stinging loss to Michigan really affected the Buckeyes. It affected the coaches far worse than it did the players. You know why? All of those postseason awards, the coaches say the players were uplifted by that. One other thing that the team did, they went to Vero Beach and stayed 10 days in Dodger Town to try and get away from the media attention in Columbus. They had empty seats they wouldn't be trying to get away from, eh, hey, partner? From the end zone, Hoying got Glenn wide open. That was a soft corner that time. Big play for the Buckeyes. Fair with coverage, but he was way too soft, and that's a 21-yard gain. Gave him too much respect, Brent. They went zone, rolled the coverage away from him. He backed up, and then he fell down when he got out of his back pedal. You see some slippage on your screen. He'll be getting him off the turf right there. With that man has that much room, he's going to put it in the end zone. 17 touchdowns scored this year. Number one receiver in the country in terms of average yards per catch. Basic eye. Toss George. Sulu is up in it. George on his own and nothing was doing. What Tennessee did that time was they broke up the interference. They did not have Sualua out there to clear the way, and there was no path. Right now, let's check in with John Saunders. We wish him a very happy New Year, John. And the same to you, Brent. And right now, the Outback Bowl is underway. Auburn in a bowl for the first time in a few years because of their eligibility problems. Wally Richardson, nine yards for Penn State to Bobby Ingram. And right now, the Nittany Lions leading it 23-7. Brent, back to you. So there's a big score for the Big Ten. Three of their teams in action. Ohio State here with second and long and point. Handing off now using Sulu as a running back. There is great gang tackling going on on the part of the volunteers that time. Billy Barron, 94, out of River Ridge, Louisiana. And the free safety, Tory Noel, out of Memphis right there. Well, John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, had everybody up there. They were about an eight-man front. They're not afraid to play man-to-man -man coverage because they believe they have good coverage people. Their safeties are aggressive. They will attack the run. Ohio State hopes to take advantage of the aggressive secondary play with strong play action. Jenkins is locked on man on man against Glenn right now and he's coming up in a bump and run on him Glenn gets off the line they can't find him go other way it's three and out and let me tell you something Mr. Jenkins came up and said Belitnikov winner you're in for a long day when you come to this side and now the Buckeyes are forced to punt again and the way they played that coverage Brent the, the corner can roll up and be more secure because they rolled the safety over to back him up they're going to challenge him they're going to get right up in his face never saw a Tennessee team that didn't challenge somebody I haven't either I coached against a few of them too of course that was a long time ago John Cooper should know he yeah. grew up in the state of Tennessee he snuck into his first college football game went over the top of a fence to watch the volunteers cut his hand but stayed for four quarters. tough guy now Fair is back deep and Bartholomew nails another one to the 20 yard line and Farrell try to dance free and he can't Tennessee ball inside the 25 yard line Matt Finkus with the coverage one of the starters on the defensive line a 50 yard punt this time and a four yard return excuse me uh, coach did you say Mr. Vrabel was kicking the stuffing out of is that what we were saying in that commercial <laughs> I said the game plan you're gonna get me in trouble again and you can do that game plan wise Tennessee plans to put their big tight end on this guy and block one on one in the first series when Scott Pfeiffer came off one on one and Mike Vrabel Mike Vrabel dominated the point of attack he's an excellent football player and that's why he is defensive lineman of the year set a record with 23 tackles for loss for Ohio State and tied his own record of 12 sacks in the season. And the other thing I really respect about him, and so do you, Brent, is how hard he plays on every snap. He empties the bucket. The 
spikes are being checked by the officials. This is a big A crew. Steve Usacek is our referee, and Bob Holliday is the umpire. And probably the length, there is a uh, restriction. And here on this wet turf, everything was being checked while we were away on that uh, commercial break. First down now, and Manning getting good time, firing to Kent. There he is his star receiver, Joey Kent out of Huntsville. Alabama with his reception and uh, so again we came into this game but if you want to match up Glenn against Kent you can follow that all day if you want to match George against Graham and Manning against Hoyne but the thing that will be changed here today is that despite the fact coming up to the game everyone expected a high scoring contest the weather is going to dominate we have seen people slipping on both sides of the ball in this game so far turnovers they will be critical as they have the entire bowl season. Good fake by Manning. Got to go deep. Got a man. He's well covered, and Howard couldn't come up with the interception. That was Greg Kyler, the track man. Howard, excellent coverage. Never let him get behind him. For one reason or another, Sean Springs is not in a ball game right now. We better check that out. He was not in on that snap. He should be at that corner position. Play action, trying to get the ball really deep to their track man, 80 Greg Kyler. Couldn't get it there. Good coverage by Ty Howard. And Ty is used to being picked on because they normally throw the ball away from Sean Springs, number 24. Nice job, Ty. I believe I see Springs standing up at the far 44-yard line. We'll check it out. Number oh, nice one. Tackle. They did not get it, I don't believe, although it's close. Close, Brent, close. It is very close. Let's see where they mark it. The last time they spotted a ball, they gave him a first down. Belisari met it, but not in time. Again, first down. Well, here is Springs over there, and... Uh, I remember being told by one of the coaches that he was a little gimpy in practice and he looked a little gimpy to me as he walked down that side and what a loss that would be here today for the Buckeyes if he can't come back. You can see the four down linemen now first down. Slide it. Wow. Slide it. Nice. Howard has Woo. stepped up big time. Perilous Price number 37 the wide receiver catching that screen did not have a chance. Ty Howard accepting the responsibility of playing wide field corner. He normally plays short field corner. He comes up and makes a pop. Let's listen to it. Wow. Nice technique. Lovey Smith, the secondary coach who used to coach at Tennessee, is going to love that technique. Antoine Winfield, number 11, is the corner on the other side. Tennessee loads up with a slot receiver on that side right now on second down and long the safeties for the Bucks back off now in this coverage and Graham is swallowed up by Matt Pinkins. Jack Aroot, the situation with Springs. Well, it's temporary, Brent, but it is a problem. Sean Springs suffered a shoulder stinger. Now, the trainer told me as soon as it clears, they will let him back in. But when you get a stinger, you've got to let the pain subside. They've got to check him over one more time, and then they'll try and get Springs back in the game. Actually, if you want to have an injury choice, it's better that than that ankle that he's going to have to have operated on. Rain continues to come down. Third down and 16. In the middle of the pocket now, he's got Kent and Kent dropped it at midfield. Oh. That can happen with a wet ball. He had the daylight, but he could not hold on at midfield. Normally, he's very reliable. Anthony Gwynn, the junior free safety, was coming there, and Tennessee will punt it away. Did you notice what happened to Antoine Winfield, the corner in coverage? He fell down. He absolutely fell down. Someone is going to fall down, and the receiver is going to catch and run one in today. Stanley, back deep. Larry Binion from Mesa, Arizona, punting again for the Volunteers. They're on it. Right got it. I got it. Block punt. The Buckeyes are going to take over with about 25 yards to go for a score. That was McClellan, the sophomore, who rolled in on that punt. 
There were three kicks blocked against Tennessee by Vanderbilt. Ohio State aware. They thought maybe they could get one before this game was over. Plus, Ohio State came in successful blocking punts. They blocked three already coming into this ball game. Too many guys. I, they had a choice to which guy to block that football. You get a punt block, you normally lose the football game. That was my experience. Outstanding rush from the outside, good rush from the inside. Central McClellan coming around that point. It was a good snap, too, floating, but it got back there quick enough. Boy, field position now, 24-yard line, short field. And you've got Mr. George lined up behind Sualua, and they couldn't get the chains moved over there in time on the far side, so they'll bring the Buckeyes back into the huddle. While we've got a chance, let's check in with John Saunders. John? Well, Brad, it's a big day for Big Ten and SEC matchups in Florida. Here's another one in the Outback Bowl in Penn State is in control in this game. First of all, here's a little pick, and it's the turnover that causes the problems for Penn State. Right now, they're leading 29 to 7. And George is free inside the Base 10. Base mask. Base mask penalty coming down. Ohio State's been good all year at a sudden change offensively. When the defense takes the ball away, they have come in and scored 23 touchdowns. They know where that end zone is. You know, actually, they broke that too, not running up behind the big Orlando pace. They ran it over there behind the right side, Eric Golston, number 15, who is the most improved offensive lineman. Young guy coming on and maturing as a player. Uh, Ohio State offense. In the red zone, spectacular, especially when you think of 44 touchdowns. Taking one more look, see, over to the right side, good kick out block right there, then he bounces, see, you can't tackle him like a 200 pound running back. He's 230 pounds and you've got to run through those tackles. Illinois found that out. The block punt. Setting up a scoring opportunity. You knew they were going to come with George. Here he is again, short of the goal line, and that time Leonard Little, the standout from Asheville, North Carolina, number one, making the stop for the Volunteers. We have played almost 13 minutes of the opening quarter of this Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl. No score, but Cooper's Buckeyes are threatening right here. Brent Joe Hollis, the offensive coordinator, told us yesterday that they plan to throw the ball a lot more inside the five-yard line than they ever have at this time. Now, that time they opened up with a run. A good call. But don't be surprised if they come with play action. You know, call an audible. That's a fouled-up play. Touchdown, Buckeyes, as Eddie George squirts into the end zone. Weather conditions can do a whole lot to change a game plan, can't they, Coach? Yeah, and they audible, fouled up the play. Quarterback runs into the backfield, but at least he ran into the right guy. He gave the ball to the big, strong guy. You'll see what I mean. Not a well-executed, clean exchange in the backfield. Hoying expected to go the other way. Look at that. He didn't care. He gave the ball to the right guy and just good power running in for the score. Not many people blocked, either. Josh Jackson, Brian Heinen, the junior wide receiver from Louisville, will put it down. And the Buckeyes strike first in the rain and slop. The Heisman Trophy winner, Eddie George, strikes first. A two yard touchdown run, and the Buckeyes lead it. ABC Sports coverage of the 1996 Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl brought to you by Comp USA. With over 5,000 computer products, Comp USA is the computer superstore. Chrysler, leaders in innovative design and engineering. The Florida Department of Citrus. And Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. Eddie George and the Buckeyes leading it by seven with 2.07 
right, to go in the opening quarter. Better cover these guys on the return. They're excellent kickoff return team, Brent. Fourth best in the country coming in here. They have a lot of speed at all positions, so they can block real well up in front. Now, maybe the turf will nullify a little bit of that speed. But... Very fair. Yeah. I'll let this one go out of the back after he yeah. tried to make an over-the-shoulder catch, and it'll come out now on the 20-yard line with the Volunteers down by seven. Interesting statistic regarding turnovers. You have all heard over and over from the coaches and the analysts turnovers turnovers so far in the college games the team that has turned it over the most has lost nine of ten games the only one where that did not hold up the turnovers were equal and that was the Virginia Georgia game so certainly in the slop down here we've had a blocked punt which has set it up and it is seven to nothing right now Peyton Manning three wide receivers He's audibling here. Now the defense moves. They're playing a little cat and mouse. Oh, nice job. Nice job. Luke Fickle, the defensive tackle inside, did a real good job. Now, he didn't make the tackle, but he ruined the play. He sent the play out to Miller. Great penetration to the inside. Nice job, Luke Fickle. Springs is still on the sideline. Howard at the left corner and Winfield is at the right. Kelly and Gwynn are the safeties. Kelly now coming up to the 25 yard line to watch the slot man who is in the formation for Manning on second down and nine. Manning rolling in that direction. Drops it off underneath to a safety valve receiver and Ty Howard moves up and pops him a good one. Mike Vrabel, 94, defensive end, won that battle matchup blocker on tight end. Scott Pfeiffer, the big guy, he whipped him that time, forced the quarterback Manning to set up and throw the ball quicker than he wanted to. Left side of your screen, 94, Vrabel working inside. He has contained on the quarterback. He does a good job. That's his responsibility. You would hope for some inside pressure right now. Now, Ty Howard has really been hitting field people. He's come up, really smacked a couple times already. Third and three. Manning needs to reach the 30-yard line for the first down. Short drop, slant, got him. And only shoot top tackle by Rob Kelly. Saved a touchdown as Marcus oh. Nash would have walked into the end zone if he wasn't tripped up at midfield. Ooh, he looked like he was driving a Nash that time. From the right side of your screen, there'll be a little slant pattern back in his side. He pops right in between. Missed tackle right there. A lunging tackle right there, and Kelly saved the day. Because they don't have the safeties that can catch this guy from behind. Wow. 25-yard gain and a Tennessee first down. Ball is across midfield now. Ohio State territory. Three wide receivers. And into the left, releases. Manning looks to the safety valve and swings it to Graham. Graham's not going to get back to the line of scrimmage as Ryan Miller, the linebacker from Allen Park, Michigan, is all over him. Manning is uh, talking to his offensive lineman. He got hit from the backside. He said, hey, guys, protect me. I'm in Peyton's place. Keep me clean. He took a nice shot from the backside. He didn't like it. First quarter comes to an end. Buckeyes, seven of the Volunteers, nothing. 7-0, Ohio State leading Tennessee. Coach Fulmer said they wanted to come out and be able to establish a running game with some zone blocking, meaning man-to-man -man blocking. They couldn't do that. They'd get into some combination and power blocking. So we'll probably see some of that now in the running series. This is second long. Won't see it on this down. They need 16, Dick, for a first down here as we start the second 15 minutes. State doing a good job of disguising coverage in 10. Screen. Graham drops it. Look at him. He's upset. Pretty good receiver. He caught 20 balls coming into the air, so we know he can catch the football. Usually in a screen, what happens when a running back drops it, his, uh, he gets distracted by the offensive lineman around him, and he starts thinking about being a runner before he is a receiver. Takes his eyes off it. Can't do that, Jay. 
Eric Lane checks into the Volunteers backfield. Third down and 16. Tough to convert a third and 16, especially if you get any kind of good pass rush. Marcus Nash slot to the left. Manning looks that way. That quick screen now to the outside to Price. And Price crosses midfield. About back to the original line of scrimmage. And here comes the punting unit for the Volunteers. Larry Binion on the field. You know, that was a wide receiver screen. All four rushmen rushed the ball real well. Two rushmen wheeled around. Matt Bonhouse, number 70, at uh, Brable 94, came back in and got in on a tackle. They are mentally ready to play today. Bill Young will be real pleased with the effort he's getting from his down four. You know, getting a punt block. But didn't you say that Eric Persigan in his career never got a punt block as yeah. a coach? That's Proof. an unbelievable statistic. False start, offense, five-yard penalty, repeat fourth down. That's like saying a quarterback goes through the season and never throws a pass interception. Mm -hmm. A coach goes through his whole career and never get a punt block. Unbelievable. The punting game has been the difference in this contest so far. Tennessee with one punt block, which set up Ohio State's touchdown, in case you just joined us. And that score was put on the board by Eddie George. And now the Volunteers will try it again. The Buckeyes bluff that they're coming, and then they go back to set the return. Stanley from the 14-yard line. Dances back to the right side. It'll be the Buckeyes ball at the 25-yard line, leading 7-0. 1347. The story of this Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl, the weather. Orlando, Florida. And you gotta hand it to these hardy fans from both Tennessee and Ohio State. They have been here for the better part of a couple of hours, finding shelter wherever it exists, and in many cases, bringing it along with them. Jack Root. Well, Brent, we just got word. You know, Ohio State has a new twist for this game. It's called the no-huddle offense. According to the game plan, it's supposed to take place in this series. We'll wait and see. Here's first and 10 as they dash from the sideline to get started. Moyne, a senior quarterback, could run it, and that is complete to the 39-yard line. And a Buckeye first down. That was Mr. Glenn, the Blitnikoff Award winner. And the Buckeyes are coming up without that huddle. Here they are, one on one situation. They play a lot of quarter quarter coverage right there, so he's one on one. And you see, you see Jenkins there, number 18, being real conservative with his technique, trying to make sure he maintains good footing. Three catches for 39 yards for Terry so far. Tears overloaded the line of scrimmage this time. Just defying the Buckeyes to bring any George at him. And they're going to try big, and he's tripped up as he comes through. Huge hole on the left side. Had been opened up by the offensive line, but he is tripped up and down at the 43-yard line. Watch this hole open up. Open up right to the right side of your screen. Reverse pivot, get it back deep. Normally when you see an eight-man front, you audible and go ahead and throw the ball. In this situation, confidence in a fullback's ability to block. Sualua, 37. There goes Eddie George up in a big hole. They decide to run at the eight-man front. But he tripped over the blitzing safety. Mr. Raymond Arts had come up into the pile that time. Second down and seven. And the Buckeyes star is short at the first down. Tennessee is moving their defensive front, and John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, said they were going to do that. And you can do that when you normally you don't give the ball to the fullback. But this time they give the ball to the fullback, and they run right behind the slant. You'll notice that charge right there. Now you'll see the ball coming in behind it. See, they were slamming away from it, not expecting the fullback to carry the ball. Little and the defenders get ready. This will be a tough two yards. Third down, Buckeyes up by seven. 0 for two on third down conversion. Here they come. Good pickup. Point middle wants Glenn bump and passes 
short. Glenn wondering if he was bumped too much by Jenkins. But yeah, they blitzed, and Sue Alua that time picked it up all right, but there was contact downfield between Jenkins and Glenn. Not sure this ball was catchable, Dick. Probably not, but it was. he took a good pop. He reached in there with his arm. You can see what a problem the receivers are trying to adjust to a football there with the turf as it is. It is going to be almost impossible to stop and come back. You can keep going. You might run under one. You know, run the slant patterns going upfield trying to catch the ball. Run the turn-ins rather than the square outs and comebacks and that kind of stuff, Brent. Bartholomew is just wailing away and Fair decides to come out from the three. That's a mistake. Out to the 11-yard line. He should have let that one go into the end zone. Fair is not their normal punt returner. Sean Summers is their normal punt returner. He's not here today. Of course, earlier this year, they lost a tremendous it twice this century. 7 <laughs> nothing. I'm glad you're not wearing your hat up here anyway. Got it close at hand, Coach. <laughs> 12.03 to go. Mark Levine, the backup tailback. Short drop Manning. Nash incomplete on that far side. And Ty Howard is doing an outstanding job. Here were the numbers from the first quarter, Coach. You can see Tennessee really strong here on the number size. Not much difference, but the big difference being the, the block punt. That's better than a turnover. You go on down here, 23-yard drive to score. Really shortens up the field. Time of possession, unimportant when you turn the ball over like that. 9 of 14 for 52 yards. Turns. Manning changing up. That's Chester Ford who offsets the fullback spot. Manning sprinting right, throwing underneath. And Marcus Nash with the completion. Winfield covering Nash. And you would think that the Tennessee coaches would like to try to get some receivers on Winfield if they can. You know, the Ohio staff felt that they lost the Michigan game because they didn't tackle well. And so they said they will never, ever practice again when they have shoulder pads on without tackling. So far today, they have tackled superbly. Real good technique, good run through, and everything else, Brent. It's showing that they've really reemphasized the fundamentals of tackling. Johnson returns at the right linebacking spot for the Bucks. to the 42-yard line, and Rob Kelly making the stop. Back-to-back -back first downs, and the Volunteers mounting an attack. This is the case of the fullback winning the battle when he takes on the running back. Right here in front, he'll go in and lead an ISO on Belisari right there, and he wins the battle. That's Chester. Pow! Nice job right there. Exploded into it. Good running off that tackle attempt. Big, strong guy, and also the fastest running back, Jay Graham, is the fastest of the group of 1,000-yard rushers they've had in the last few years. Eight carries, 31 yards for Graham. There's a slot receiver down to the left. Manning, the faked and fool. Vrabel's got him. Vrabel's got him at the 34-yard line. Vrabel is too smart to be fooled. Tough to run those kind of plays on him. Three-time academic all-conference, an outstanding student. He is also a thinker on that field. Right side of your screen, coming up, see they're trying to sucker him. Gonna come underneath him. He reads it all the way. Well done, Matt Brable. You only have to learn to really respect to how he plays football, huh, Brent? He's a tremendous defensive lineman. He's been a favorite of yours for a couple of years. Yeah, he's a young man that they told back in his high school days that he would never play against and uh, he simply went and found a doctor who gave him permission <laughs> drop it off and that's my kind of football player folks yeah. my kind of doctor. doctor my kind of doctor <laughs> jake graham the uh receiver jack Root. well brent remember the mvp from last year's florida citrus bowl bet you don't but i bet you you remember leo the dog remember he disrupted the game for about 10 minutes gene stalling said it stalled his offense it took them out of the game plan well, Leo the dog is safe and sound. In fact, he was made an executive member of the Citrus Bowl last January. Now, he's not here. He lives three blocks away, but we do have one dog, Old Smokey. Hey, hey, say hello to Old Smokey down there, Jack. Third down and 11. Manning. Manning in trouble. And 
throws it away. And that was Luke Fickle who was closing in on him. They're doing a good job of mixing up the coverage. They show a coverage, and then they play a different coverage. And that's really tough on a quarterback. Sophomore or not, that's tough on a senior as well. And Manning plays with the poise and the intelligence of a senior anyway. The shoulder pad stuck down there. He's really put on some weight. The most dedicated weight trainer they have in the program, Brent. He likes to work. Works very, very hard at this game and also in the classroom. An honor student. So the weather here has taken away the offensive fireworks that were anticipated, at least so far. Yeah. Offense move. Offense moving again. That's the second time they've moved. You know, if you already got a punt blocked, you might as well get up there and shake defensively because those offensive blockers up front, they're going to quiver. That's really, tough. That's really tough on you. Of course, in, in punt protection blocking, you never fire out to block anybody. You absorb their rush. Set your feet, square up, and pop. So you shouldn't be lunging forward or moving forward just because a defender moved. They're pretty tight in that formation. You might get one again off the outside corner. That's a low line driver. He gets it. Stanley bobbles it again at the 10. Stanley from the penalty flag. Fumble! The Buckeyes may have still loose. They're still going after that slippery ball. Woo. Let's see now. If Buckeyes have it. I believe at the bottom of that pile you will find Antoine Winfield. Number 11 appeared to dive in there. It was still loose for a good time. Brable had it for a while, 94. He had it for a while, but it got out from underneath him. Boy, that ball must be slippery. Come down in the air, it's getting water on it as it comes down. Here comes the ball out. Now he's staggering right there, it goes out. There's Vrabel with it. I thought he had it, but then he lost it. There it comes out. The receiving team on the run back. Penalty from front of foul. So the Bucks will be penalized for the spot of foul, but the young man who's been forced to step in, Winfield, replacing the injured Springs, comes up with a big play for Cooper and the Buckeyes, who lead it by seven. Had a chance to ask Coach Cooper, bad weather favors whom in this game, John? I think the rain helps the Buckeyes. I think it helps us. We played so many games this year in adverse weather, rain, uh, sleet, snow, uh, it shouldn't bother us at all. Also helps to have these huge offensive linemen out here that we <laughs> yeah. see and the puddles that are standing yeah. here. Yeah. So far they haven't taken advantage of Orlando Pace up behind him. He's at the left tackle, the Lombardi Award winner. Left foot is cocked in that direction. Dudley the tight end behind him. There wasn't much of a crease over there behind no. Big Pace that time. But it can so show you, it's a great line. example, even though Pace does a nice job of blocking Steve White, number 64, the play broke down inside him. He knocked his man off the ball. Here he is, 300 pounds, 330 he pounds. He comes up, he just pops down. him up and takes him out. It's going to set him down and buy him a ticket to the ball game. But it didn't matter. It broke down inside. Dick, they have taken little out of the game right now. He's over on the volunteer sideline. They do a good job of rotating the defensive lineman. 91 Jonathan Brown is a good player playing in his spot right now. He is at the left defensive end for the volunteers. Cross charge. Low. Glenn went after it incomplete. See, when they bring a guy like him in there, rather than going on the straight outside fast speed rush like Little uses, they use a cross charge and brought him back up underneath. Little returns to the field right now. They got to get the ball in Dudley's hands. I've seen him open twice. That time they might have been able to pop him the ball that time, too. He's coming from the right side of your screen, number 80, Dudley. He's just looking inside there for the looking. Showing double zone. Jenkins they backs do. off at Tillman. 
Hoyne. Right place. Hoyne got it to Dudley on the ground. Volunteers go after it. Let's see. The Buckeyes indicate it was marked down. A great read, but an easy read for an experienced senior. They showed the two deep very, very early, so he didn't have to read the coverage. The safeties are right back here. He reads that. Now you automatically want to go down the hole versus a two deep zone. They do it. They're throwing it to the right guy. He is definitely down when the ball comes out. You sure you could tell from that angle, Coach? Well, <laughs> good question. Good point. I didn't see it come out real early. I'm not sure that I can tell whether or not he had possession as he was going down behind him. But regardless, it's a first down here for the Buckeyes. Showing they're going to come after him or bluff. He's audibly. And a penalty flag is thrown. And the volunteers are indicating that there was movement over here on the right side of the offensive line. Dead ball. Ball stars. Offense. Golston was setting up to hold off little that time and there was movement. I tell you I might move a little early if I saw a defensive end that's the second fastest man on the defensive team getting a three point stance next to me too. He can absolutely fly. And he is just a sophomore. Bobby Hoying what a career he's had. Taking a look again to see if he had the ball. He's got the ball put away there. Ah. Came out when he hit the turf. First down and 15 for Hoyne and the Buckeyes. They're loaded up inside, Brent. Drop off the screen, George Battling out the handle and can't. And the big problem here today simply is the inability of the players to hold on to the wet football. And I got news. If I was one of these receivers on the Buckeyes, I'd go without gloves for a time. With that wet ball, I'd try bare skin on it to see if I could hold on just a little bit better. I'd experiment with it. Excellent pressure inside by Billy Barron coming right here. You'll see him right here. Really good pressure. Uses a swim, arm over like that. Guard can't stop him. He's just going right back in there. You want penetration on the screen, but maybe not quite that much. Man, inches away. Sunny weather and probably catches that ball. Pepe Pearson checks into the Buckeye backfield. He's in there with George. They split the two tailbacks out. Pearson blocking for him, and they run George the other way. And it was a little bit high, and he was defended that time by Sanders. Very good coverage. Man-to-man -man situation all the way. Couldn't throw it. Terry Fair at the top of the screen had Glenn covered. Here's Terry Fair right there at 13. Look at he's having a little trouble with his foot. Both of them sitting there. But as he looked downfield like that, he didn't think he had the cushion, so he lays the ball off. 7-0. Midway through the second quarter. Rain still coming down in Orlando. The Cop USA Citrus Bowl. And it will be a battle of turnovers before this is over. We've already had a blocked punt. Showing the double zone again. George. Little forces him back into the inside of the defense. They could not move Little on the outside. And George had to step back into the heart of the defense. Not taking a chance to throw the interception on third and real long. That field position, electing to go with a draw, and you're giving the ball to a Heisman Trophy winner. The yards aren't great, but they're better when you hand the ball off to a guy like him. Plus, that's an outstanding pass rush team. They set a new school record with 42 sacks. Tennessee can rush the passer. Bartholomew doing an excellent job of punting. Listen to this. It's the best we've ever seen in punt. Average 55 yards a punt, long as 65, almost had one down inside the five-yard line. You call that first one. I mean, he has that home cooking will do that for a leg, folks. I think it's a sunny weather. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your umbrellas. Patrick is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coverage on fair. Tennessee trailing by seven. Teams always love coming to Orlando in the Florida Citrus Bowl. There you go. See Peyton Manning and Universal Studios with some of his teammates. They have big time down here. They're extremely well taken care of by this organizing group. They do a great job down here, Brent. And the coaches said the coaches themselves managed and organized their time better so the kids could have more fun, too. Lane is the fullback. Graham, the tailback. 
They're set in the eye. Graham behind the left side penalty flag. Bonhaus makes the stop for the Bucks. frustrated they said they wanted to set a physical tone to this football game going against these Big Ten teams they wanted to come off the ball just like they did that time and if you looked at the Michigan game tapes from Michigan's offense against Ohio State's defense you would have great confidence you could block them and run them but they're playing much more physical today than they did at that time plus the running conditions are not as good Yeah, Dick, I think this is simply a war of attrition and just waiting for that break. And kicking games, one break already, and there'll probably be another one within this ballgame. Some kind of a bad happening. Kyler and Kent. Kent is the receiver to the short side, and Winfield locks up on him. They back off now, and they give him safety help on that side. Manning, though, looks the other way. A wobbler, pullback lane. Helmet shattering tackle. Turnover! Got it! That was Ty Howard who lost his helmet, knocked the ball free, and made the recovery. The defensive play of the game by the Buckeye cornerback. Again, great tackling by Ty Howard. He has absolutely been spectacular. Top of your screen, action pass out, freeze it right there now. Here he comes, here he comes, wham! Watch the helmet now. Wow, <laughs> holy macro. And he had the strap buckle, ladies and gentlemen. He just hit him hard. Now that what we want to also show you is without a helmet, what he does in the next fraction of an instant. We'll show you that here after this first play. Here he is on the turf right there. He goes back and gets the football. Now George set in the eye behind Sualua. Here he comes, left side, big hole, Orlando Pace blows it open. That time they used a little counter draw play. They want to counter this fast moving defense. They take the ball back deeply, then they go ahead and pull the tackle around and lead him through the point of attack. First thing they do is to get the, the end upfield like this and they bring his tackle around on the linebacker. The counteraction, the tailback, he steps one way, they come around, and here comes Golston, number 60, through the hole, and then, actually, just good running by Eddie George. Here he comes again to the right side of your screen. Golston doesn't really do a good job of blocking. Eddie George does a better job of running. George, with little hanging on. George diving for the Buckeye first down. They needed to reach the 12-yard line. So a block punt. And now a turnover. And the Buckeyes have moved with this powerful offensive line to the Volunteers' 12-yard line. It's a first down, Bucks. Now Pace That's the end and loads up. Yep. The tackle's on the right-hand side. George will go behind the two tackles to the seven-yard line. Sualua exchanging words with Little now. A little shoving. Sumner steps in between them. That's 630 pounds over there lined up coming off the ball. Two big tackles side by side. Eric Golston, 6'3", 300. Orlando Pace, 6'6", 320. That's a lot of beef at the point of attack. Unbalanced line, they haven't used that this year in that variation, so the defense must adjust. Not in it this time. Second down. Showing blitz. to the three-yard line. And the advantage they have is they can make a first down before they score. And the other Just advantage they have is a 265-pound fullback and Nicky Sualua. Middle of your screen, three-point stance. He takes on the linebacker, bam, right there. Knocks him out of the hole. Gives Eddie George a chance to use his force. Nice block on 47, Jerome Hines. Rain continuing to come down. 4.14 to go. Bucks are up by seven. See, now they can really have two downs for a first down before they think touchdown. Glenn comes behind Hoyne. George to the middle and short of the end zone. And let's see if they got the first down. That'll depend on the 
the spot. A lot of confidence in that offensive line's ability to knock people off. And talk about Orlando Pace, but Jamie Sumner, the big left guard's a pretty darn good football player. Juan Porter, the offensive center, is their second best offensive lineman. LaShawn Daniels has really improved at that right guard spot as well. And here come the chains. There's been a little barking down there. A lot of fellows down there in the pits on both sides. Just short. Go ahead, go for it. Joe Hollis. John, we won't second guess you. <laughs> Not unless you don't make it. <laughs> I know you, Musburger. Come on. You left yourself wide open on that one. Conferring with Walt Harris in the press box down to Joe Hollis on the field discussing what they're going to do with the ball. You would think with a big 300-pound line and a 230-pound pullback. Is this, a, is this a mystery? You got a Heisman <laughs> Trophy winner and an yeah. offensive line and a pullback like Sumalo? Let me make it sound complicated, will you? <laughs> <laughs> the coaches, X's, O's, slap. Come on, let's go. Helmet snake. on a helmet. Little is now flopped over to the right side of the pace side. Here they come. Fourth down, inches for the first down. Jump all over him that time. Number 50, Duff, leads really the way enough. and makes the stop for Tennessee. He got inside penetration, and you should never allow a defensive lineman to get inside penetration and a gap in the goal line. Great job by Bill Duff. <laughs> I'll tell you, not only did they stop him, they gained a big mental edge right side of your screen. Right there, first penetrate, two guys penetrating in there, Brent. Take another good look at this thing. Too many red jerseys, orange jerseys in there. Everybody, look at they're jumping over the top to get. They must run that play consistently in that situation. I'd have taken a field goal. I don't know what he's thinking about. First down. There comes Graham trying to stretch it out. Good effort. The seven yard line and that was Kelly that's just good second effort this is a junior running back out of Concord North Carolina but at Concord High School you can see why it was a high school All-American demonstrating those same skills here as a as a junior in college good good running effort got another year to play Backfield. And that's a record, 1,400 yards, single season record. Set in the eye formation. Pfeiffer will lead the way, and the Buckeyes are getting good penetration on that defensive front. Tennessee is unable to keep that front clean right now, and that is causing problems down there. You know, as they told us yesterday, Brent, they've had to move offensive linemen around a year, all year, because of the problems they had. And it, I think they lose a little continuity sometimes in having to do that. Dick, they lost a monster in Ratliff. You talked about him, and uh, I didn't gonna, even see him. I'm going to tell you something. I think he made it through about three games. That changed everything on this offensive line, and I just hope the young man straightens his life out because I think he can play on Sunday afternoon in the NFL. So do they. Third down. Manning. Trap down at the three-yard line. That was Pinkus. Ah, Pinkus coming up with a big one. Four sacks on the year. Comes up with a sack on this one. Last year, he was really strong sacking, but you got two guys coming off the point, like Vrabel and Finkus. Boy, they are here. There's Vrabel, 94, getting good penetration, pushes him up inside. Here comes his teammate around the outside. He beats Trey Tig, number 70, around the outside with a good, hard pass rush. Now, the Buckeyes call a timeout. They're going to get the ball back in excellent field position. Plus, remember, they've already had one punt block. Now they don't have room to line up in a spread punt formation. Real dangerous. So we'll come back and show you what the Buckeyes are thinking about. 153 to go in the first half. Ohio State, which failed on fourth down, but now the defense holds, and the young man from Mesa, Arizona, Larry Binion, look how close he is. In fact, I believe right now he is standing off the
the end line. Look where he is right now. He's got to step up on that snap. He can't be standing back there. Here he comes. He, comes. he can't step back. Winfield, who mm -hmm. has blocked a punt already, is lined up on the right side of the Buckeye defense. He's in tight right now. They didn't rush it. No, they're going to set up a return, Dick. they got enough time. They're going to get good field position. Stanley, if he just hangs on this time, down he goes at the 37-yard line. You've got 142 to go now. You know, in my experience coaching kicking game, we got as many good punt returns off a punt rush as we did on a design punt return. Jack, how's Springs injured shoulder? Well, Brent, we don't know. Here's Sean Springs right now. Now get this, they went to x-ray his shoulder, and this guy broke the x-ray machine. <laughs> so they're not quite sure, but Sean, you said you had to say something to Brent and Dick? Brick, Brent and Dick is usually my good luck, so uh, I can't believe him. I got hurt this game. <laughs> yeah, you'll be back. My man. <laughs> he right, says if he back. doesn't get to come back, guys, he wants to come up and help you call the rest of the game. He could do it. All I know is, what is it with the Buckeyes and the X-ray machine? Isn't that how they broke the Heisman Trophy of LaGuardia? First down and 10. Now Hoyne, getting protection, left side, throws it out of bounds. George was working downfield as a pass receiver that time, and it's gonna be second and 10. They wanna get into a formation, putting Dudley, the tight end, out as a wide receiver and bring Glenn inside into the slot so they can put Glenn on a safety. Now, I have not seen them do that. This would be a good position in the field to do that, Brent. You get in that quarter, quarter coverage, and you'll end up with Terry Glenn, a great receiver, being covered by a strong safety. Second down and 10. Double zone coverage. Going in trouble. Down he goes at the 45-yard line. Burton, number 84, just wailed into him. He is an intense guy. Going to play in the hula bowl, so every everybody else has recognized his ability to rush the passer as well. Coming from the defensive tackle position, rushing inside. Here he is to the left side of your screen now, working on the cart. And see what happened then? Same thing happened. LaShawn Daniels, the offensive guard, slipped and fell. Here we are, right in the middle of the screen. Now, LaDon Daniels, see, he gets overpowered. He can't get his feet planted in the turf. Excellent rush by Shane Burton. This is third down, and the Bucks have got to get to the 27-yard line now. And Hoyne's going to try to set the screen. Ah. George drops it. Oh, they had a chance. They had a chance. And Little had come over quickly. If they were going to have a chance, you better make sure that number one is accounted for defensively. You bet. And nobody can get there from the defensive end position quicker than he can. 4 3 8 40. That's unbelievable speed. Now, what's interesting here, as it has been raining all morning, and I mean earlier coming down, and it is hard again. What's interesting now with 50 seconds is if Tennessee can get a rush on Bartholomew, although he has been really punting brilliantly here today, but if they can somehow, now is the time that you want to go after him, if you can come up with it. They don't show that, uh, Brent. They actually show a, like a, a true defense being played on the field rather than a punt return. A little was picked up. No. It'll come out on the 20-yard line with 41 seconds left. The Bucks are up by a touchdown. Well, Dick, without question, what has changed everything in this game has been the weather. Some folks now are just joining us. Tell them what's going on here, what we've watched in the first half. Well, we've, we've really watched two offensive teams that come in here high-powered, slowed down by the, the field conditions. Receivers go out to run routes. They fall down. Receivers, the ball hits them in the hand. They can't make the catch. Pass rushers starting to gain a little momentum, but they really haven't been able to get to the quarterbacks. You know, Brent, you'd still think sooner or later the running game is going to start eating up to the defense, one side or the other. If they don't turn it over. Yeah, here comes a nice runoff tackle. And Graham breaks one. Yep. That's the first down, and the clock will stop at 34 seconds. Volunteers need to hurry. Win making the stop now for the Bucks. Offensive coordinator Dave Cutliff calls that. That's the power attack. He said if we couldn't zone, we're going to power. John Saunders coming up at the half, and of course we'll have the golden anniversary celebration right here. I'm sure that's been limited because of all the rain that the field has taken. They will not have as elaborate a ceremony as they had planned. And tonight on ABC, no, 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 the NBA is not moving over here. This is a movie tonight. <laughs> Sneakers, special time. 
eight thirty Eastern Pacific. Robert Redford, Sidney Poitier, Goodwin tonight on ABC. Oh, Smokey is here with the volunteers. And while we have a moment, let's check out some other shows coming your way on ABC. We're back and Manning puts it into Graham's hands again, and he breaks free at midfield. He's in a foot race. Howard trying to get him. It's Graham. Touchdown, Tennessee. the danger of giving the ball back to this offense you bet and you're giving it the ball to the right guy earlier in the broadcast we said he's the fastest thousand yard rusher they've had in a while great big huge hole in the draw not good tackling in that situation right there and you're not going to catch this guy from behind he's a 55 meter champion tough tough guy and a long fast run 69 yards now for the tie and nothing's automatic in weather like this in the kicking game Ford does tie it. So Graham, matched against the Heisman Trophy winner, has now carried 13 times for 117 yards. You can see Vrabel coming up field right here. They get a good pin block right here, and he'll come through and hit that hole. See, if they get him turned out, guard goes up and gets a nice knockdown block on the linebacker. That was... Brzezinski was in there playing at the linebacker position, and wow! What a sudden change. That is what, 99 yard drive? They came out for the 20 yard They line. came out for the 20 because of the, the punt, end. that's right, yeah. So he gets 69 of the 80 yards on that run, and there are still 23 seconds left. And there was a taste of what we might have seen today if we'd had a dry track. But instead, everybody's been reaching for the mud clogs. Everybody's patting him on the back. Even the cop over there on the sideline. <laughs> That's so good. We ought to look at it again. From I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, Coach. If anything turned this around, not necessarily this play, it is that fourth down defensive stand by the And I know you said you'd go ahead and kick the field goal. <laughs> I'm looking good Excellent. now. You are. Second guess. There goes Graham, and like Dick told you. Running. Excellent running. You see, in, in Ohio State, not, doesn't have the two quickest safeties in the world back there either. Now you would say that's good coaching, right? Yeah, I think no. I tell you, <laughs> you know, I coached a great running back one time, and he made me look smarter every I'm time. I'm going to tell you where the good coaching play. came into that. You pointed it out. What they did with Vrabel on that hard charge, and they just let him charge his way out. Yeah, and they went right into that crease. Four man rush. Point in trouble. He gets away from Little. Now he throws it. Deflected. Oh, oh, baby. Almost. They almost had it back at midfield. That was Deron Jenkins yeah. who couldn't get a grip on it with 15 seconds to go. Buckeyes better be careful here. Very, very careful. See, they're rolling up and double right there. Fulmer's happy with that one. Here's Glenn coming off the ball. They're playing the zone, playing him loose. See how loose he is there? I mean, Deron Jenkins was turning and running. He's sitting there, but there's underneath coverage. See, now this corner comes back up and tries to make the play. Oh, they're really sagging. They ought to sag in this kind of defensive situation here. 15 seconds to go. Maybe they ought to run the draw themselves. Huh? Second down now with 15 seconds to go. Here's the draw. George. George responding to the challenge <laughs> he issued horse? by Graham. He's at midfield. Same type of play, same blocking scheme, but their people downfield did a little better job of making the tackle proper angles of pursuit in making the tackle critical when a running back gets downfield. 
seems like we've had more action in the last minute than we had in the first uh, quarter and 14. Coming at us from the right side of your screen, you're going to see a big tackle pass set now. Seeing so the same kind of hole. See that? Same draw situation. Good lead block right there on Sanders, number 22. Good power running, but a better tackle coming inside out than we saw by the Ohio State Buckeyes. chance to really demonstrate his skills nor has Pat Peyton Manning they really haven't had that chance let's take a look at this now the matchup the Heisman Trophy winner and Graham and you can see what they've accomplished here Graham with a slight advantage although both of them have scored the touchdowns remember Eddie George was stopped on fourth down and inches if they had not gotten the touchdown they would have had a first and goal down there on that play so on that series the entire Tennessee defense sold out jumped all over Eddie George stuffed it then there was an exchange of punts and Tennessee struck for the touchdown eight seconds to go tied at seven and Hoyne holds it back jump ball won by Tennessee on the interception and that's going to run it out here in the first half Austin the safety picks off the jump ball and it's a seven seven tie as the Buckeyes and the Volunteers Head to intermission. And right now, we're going to send you to New York and Big John Thunder. Well, Dick Vermeil, we had uh, a matchup of two tremendous running backs here in this game. Eddie George, the Heisman Trophy winner, striking first for the Ohio State Buckeyes. And for those of you who just joined us, this followed a blocked punt by Ohio State. Just a good old power play, and he cuts it outside. And this is just, just, just tough running in an intense area. Nobody does it much better than that guy does at 230 pounds, Brandon. Up by seven. The Buckeyes had another opportunity. A fourth down. Everyone in the ballpark knew who was coming. Certainly Tennessee, and they ganged up on number 27. An exchange of punts, and then inside of a minute to play in the first half, and lightning struck for the Volunteers, and here he is. 69-yard draw play. Jay Graham, 1,400 yards coming into this ball game, and he just added 69 yards. Good running, good balance, great speed. Tennessee rushed the ball 13 times in the first half. He had every carry if you discount the two sacks of Peyton Manning. That's good coaching. <laughs> I'd say. Now, Vrabel came through with a pair of sacks. He was all over Peyton Manning that time. He's the kind of guy that he's always coming. If he doesn't get the sack, he helps the teammate get the sack coming from the other side, Brent. And the smoke is now clearing, and there is the young man who was the Big Ten defensive lineman of the year, Mike Vrabel. We like him and seen him play enough to really know what a good football player he is. Offensively, I think what I do coming out at half, both offensive teams get a couple tight ends in there, two wide outs, and run those good running backs. Jack Aroot. Brent, not only has it stopped raining and even we're seeing some sh sunshine, but take a look at the field. Now, we told you it's prescription athletic turf. There are pumps about 15 feet beneath this turf, and they have done their job. The standing water I showed you at the top of the show, it's gone. It's still slick, but it's a little better track than in the first half. All right, Jack, thank you very much. And the smoke is starting to clear here. And uh, Dick, I want to ask you about the Rose Bowl. Your your thoughts as we come up here to the booth for the USC Northwestern game that is next. Well, I'll tell you, Brent. Northwestern goes back there. I've seen them play. I've seen USC play. I can't believe. I can't believe that they're the underdog going back there. I really, I really think Northwestern's got a real good chance of beating them. <laughs> hey, uh, I wanted to work the second half, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I said that. <laughs> he just throw me right out of here. Uh, he said the right thing, didn't he, folks? <laughs> oh, I'm just happy for the youngsters, the fans, and the, and the coaching staff. We'll get walloped. It'll be a good football Home game for the Trojans. Here's the kickoff now. We're underway in the second half. Fair. Hill to the 32-yard line before he goes down. Thank you. 
So here are the halftime statistics. Dick, as Peyton Manning dashes onto the field to get started again. Well, they favor Tennessee. They got 50 more total yards on offense, a little more, and just a slightly more in time of possession. Brent tied up ball game, obvious with a punt block there, getting the score for Ohio State, following the punt block, the long run. Short drop, wobbly pass, but right into the hands of Nash, who is ganged up on and pushed out of bounds on the far side. And the crowd here, the Tennessee fans, thought that was a little bit too emphatic as we check back in on Dick Vermeil's Victor Keys. Protect Peyton's place. They actually done a pretty good job, but he's been sacked twice in two hurries, but he still completed 12 of 18, not many yards. Graham can't fumble, and he hasn't done that. He's got 117 yards. He's done a great job. Stuffed the Heisman. They haven't stuffed him, but they've done a good job of controlling him. Stuffed well, the last time I'm going to let you guys help me with those terms. Uh, Happy New Year, Coach. <laughs> Second down off a of fake. Another wobbly pass, but this one held by Kyler, the freshman. Brent, I still think the offensive coaches would be smart to get two tight ends in their offense some and run at it so they can also bounce outside. Here's Tennessee possessions. First time, the own 28 plays, six plays. They've been punting the football. That was the one that got blocked, just killed them, obviously. Then the, the just two play and fumble. That punt is worse than a fumble. Third and three for the Volunteers. on Kelly. Kelly bumped into Pfeiffer, the tight end on the throw, and he drew the flag from the linesman. It was not catchable, but he still had to call it. See, Kelly was locked up on him, locked up man-to-man -man because they were coming after him. Now they're ruling whether it was catchable, I think. You're talking about it, Brent. Pfeiffer's a great big guy. You've got to get up there in a hurry to tackle him, but not that soon. They're gonna, they're gonna eat it. Disregard the flag, uncatchable pass. Yeah, ball is not catchable. Looked like it from here. Phil doesn't agree with him. To the bottom of your screen, it flips it out there. See, the ball is not catchable. Actually, it looked like Pfeiffer started to pull off the ball for some reason. To the left of your screen again, uh, not catchable. Good call. You don't want penalties to determine the outcomes of football. Homer, one last yeah, play. He does right now. Look Lies. at it. Ridiculous. Where do we get these numbers? <laughs> Binion, hunting for the Volunteers, standing inside the 25. Ooh, the 28, the Bucks came after him again. Into. Stanley, fair catch, flag is down. Fair catch at the 24-yard line, and there is an infraction against the Buckeyes. It's Either way, it's a first down, Brent, because it's fourth and four or three. So if it's running into its five yards, it's a first down. If it's roughing its 15 yards, it's a first down. So Manning and the Volunteers didn't get pass interference, but they got this instead. Coming from the left side, here come they spread out there. You try to get in front of your kicker at the at the kicking point. He's not back there. In that situation, you can. Yeah, really you've got to protect here. him. The rusher was a little too deep. This is a big one, Coach. Yeah. Critical. This is a 15-yarder, brings it across midfield, and now the Volunteers are attacking from the 47-yard. What do you think of going after that one? I have no problem with that. I have no problem with it. It's been successful. They're in a very, very tight punt formation. The two outside ends, you know, but you've got to get to the kicking point way in front of the kicker. That is just like a turnover right there, Brent. Kent on the wideouts for Manning. Great protection. Kent deep. Got it. Got it. That's touchdown, Tennessee. Another big play. Oh, did he concentrate on that pass? That was not a perfectly thrown ball, but he hung with it for a 47-yard touchdown, and the Volunteers lead for the first time today. <laughs> the weather has changed for the better. The quarterback and the wide receiver. Peyton Manning's ball is not a real tight spiral at any time, Brent. That is a typical Manning pass. The tip wobbles a little bit. Tight man-to-man -man coverage over there. He sets up in the five-step drop, turns it, gets good height on the ball, good rhythm in the throw. Receiver turns around. Poor young Winfield could not see him turn around. You may not have been able to pivot like that in the first half. Four dads, the extra point, but let me tell you
tell you right away what's happened. The volunteers have said, we've got to go at 11. we got to get off number two. We can't make a living against Howard. <laughs> so they go after Winfield, yeah. and bingo, 14-7, volunteers. Now, remember at the top of the day, we told you there were three big-time performers on each of these offenses. For Tennessee, they've been able to bust Graham on a run, and now Kent on a reception from Manny. Only George has slipped into the end zone for the Buckeyes. Glenn has not scored yet. Hoyne is looking for a touchdown pass. Bucks were stopped on a short fourth down. Pearson, who checks in as a return man for Ohio State, will try to cut oh. The volunteers are fired up, Brent. Those that's orange blurs coming down here. Here's the roughing the punter that set up the last touchdown pass. Boom, they get underneath them right there. There comes the flag. Here's the touchdown. Good coaching. Go after him right away. You got the ball back. The defense is a little bit down. You go after the true freshman at the corner playing over there in place of Springs, who's so far still on the sideline. Good coaching. Buckeyes turn, trailing for the first time today. Glenn is off to Hoyne's right. Tillman is off to his left. Dudley is on the right, and here comes George to the 23-yard line, and the first Tennessee player who hits him gets help. That was Noel coming up from his safety spot, but the first man who makes contact, two more orange jerseys always flash into your picture. With the way the volunteers play their secondary, a lot of quarter coverage all the way across, dividing the field at 25% at least between the four defensive backs, they commit the safeties on strong run force. So the Buckeyes have got to come with a good play-action pass and try to get behind him if they can catch him in those coverages. Four down linemen, and now a couple of gap men for Tennessee as they put six up defensively. Point dropped by Tillman at the 35. Victor Keys for the Bucks. Dick, look this way. Well, we said they had to eat up the clock because Tennessee is such an explosive offense. They really haven't done that. Not far off. The home run from Terry Glenn, they have not been able to do that yet. And go the hard way. Make Tennessee go the hard way. They did not do that. They gave them the big 69-yard run. And uh, the 47-yard pass play already, which right. is the difference. So twice they have surrendered the big play. And there is Binion loosening up the leg. Jenkins defended him, but it's a first down for the Bucks. And they only converted for one third down situation in, in the first half. Tell you, they have a lot of guts on defense in Tennessee to go blitz on third and long, put your corner singled up, a lot of confidence in Deron Jenkins, 18 right there, to put him on the likes of a Terry Glenn, who is explosive. 17 touchdown receptions this year. Don't want to do that too many times. Ooh, and he took a hit, but Bobby Hoying is used to doing that. Also, the Buckeyes are used to... Now, Glenn limped off after that reception. He's over on the far side. So, Jack Aroot will give us an update on their star wide receiver. That means Demetrius Stanley has checked into the lineup. Tillman no. bobbling it again out of bounds and incomplete. He's got the dropsies here in this half. Come on, Buster. Tillman, you've got to catch those footballs when they're like that. Don't get in a slump, buddy. That means that Miller will enter the game right now as a wide out for the Bucks. Ohio State, you could see they really didn't mount a drive. They really, the touchdown drive coming off the block punt, three plays. That's not Buckeye football. They are used to coming from behind. They've been successful in doing that. Did a great job against Penn State in coming from behind. So this is a long way from over. Base 4-3 now for the Volunteers. This is Pearson. And Pearson for about a couple of yards and penalty flags. Pearson is an, a real good football player. Jesse Saunders is a real good football player over there. The outside linebacker. You don't hear a lot about him. You hear about Scott Gallion. Face mask penalty.
Here it is coming from the right side of the screen here, and he's got... Nope, there's the face mask right there. Good call. So now they will repeat the second down, and the line of scrimmage is at the 47-yard line. Tennessee, 14, Ohio State, 7. Turn. Injury not serious, Jack tells us from the sideline. Glenn is off to the left. Sulu and George are tight in the backfield. They're doubling up on Glenn right now, and they get to him anyway. At the 45-yard line, he had worked off the left side of the offense that time, and the Buckeyes continue now to move the chain. They came up and pressed Buster Tillman to split in man-to-man, -man, Brent, and rolled the coverage over and really went after him, but they didn't play him short and long. They just let him play aggressive corner play and backed him up with the safety on the inside. Also protecting in case they go to Dudley down a seam type pattern. Now Fair takes Tillman. Glenn comes over here on Jenkins. Safeties are too deep, and Hoyne firing toward a diving Glenn. No good, incomplete. Jenkins and Glenn waging one of those great duels. You know, they're forgetting Ricky Dudley inside. Ricky Dudley inside is not being covered. He's wide open inside there. Follow from right here, the left side of your screen. Second You'll see what I'm talking about. Play action, eats up the linebackers. Here he is coming right down the hole. He's waving, hey, throw me the ball. It's an easier throw. I thought he caught the ball. But they're a lot closer than I am, and I know the officials are never wrong. <laughs> you notice an attitude change? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Second down and 10. New Year's resolution for the coach. No more jumping on the refs. Here comes George. George for five yards. I'll tell you, LaShawn Daniels right now, the offensive right guard's got to pick up the tempo. He pulled to go up into the hole, and the linebacker scraped off and knocked him right on his keister. That should not happen to a 285-pound guard. Come on, LaShawn. It's an important game for you, buddy. Now Brown replaces Little, gives him a little more bulk in the defensive line. This is a third down and six for the Buckeyes. Tillman and Stanley to the left. To the short side of the field comes Glenn, locked up with Jenkins. They're going double zone look, Brent. No, they're rolling oh, over the outside. Back behind Glenn, couldn't make the catch. And it's hunting time for the Buckeyes. He went to the right receiver. They showed a double look, like they were gonna go double zone too deep and roll up, and they rolled away. It was a good read by Hoying. Good read. He went right inside. He just didn't throw it well. And he's a very accurate passer, throwing 63% or better coming into the ball. Let's see if Bartholomew can very fair with a punt this time. He has punted brilliantly here today, but a couple of them have gone into the end zone, right. one of which allowed Tennessee to come out from the 20-yard line and score the touchdown just toward the end good job. of the first half. There he pooches this one up. And the Bucs have got a chance, and they have Excellent. downed it. Shavers, the star of their special teams, downs it at the two-yard line. 37-yard punt. The average is hurt, but he has helped the team. Garut, uh, I do not see Springs down there here at the Comp USA Citrus Bowl. Is he out? Brent, nor will you for the rest of the game. They have taken Sean to get an X-ray. They want to rule out any bony problems in the shoulder. But it's obvious that that cornerback is really hurting. The loss of Springs has affected the Buckeyes. And they popped Mr. Graham through again, this time to the 11-yard line on first down. You know, Dick, Tennessee has made the most of some horrible field position. Their average starting field positions, their own 18-yard line. Compare that with the Bucks, their own 38. That's a big difference. You, big difference. Normally, you'd be behind in that situation. Vrabel is at the left defensive end. The Bucks load up with Johnson up there, and uh, as people were stepping into that neutral zone, the officials stopped it before the snap. Tennessee coming out right away and using some power blocking, doubling down and kicking out. Full start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down.
Bill Fulmer talking to the press box. They want to keep giving the ball to this guy. They, they don't lose when he runs for 100 yards, and he's already got 100 yards. And that statistic applies all any kind of football, really. Look at the volunteers do not want to turn it over down here. That would be critical. Oh, nice tackle. He has stopped at the six-yard line, and I mean he is hammered right there in the middle of that hole. That was Kevin Johnson coming in. Excellent tackling for him for the most part we've seen from the Buckeyes today on defense. Trying to make up for the, their bad showing against the University of Michigan. You see from the left side, you'll Watch see him Bellasari close too, on this. Bellasari do a good job too, Britt. Yeah, he really did a nice job. Coming from this side right here. Here he is up here. They're going to try to block him. See, they come down. Now he steps right up. Pow! Nice job. It's exciting to see a guy hit like that. And he was bobbling the snap, the handoff just a touch. He had to get a grip on that ball more than anything else, and he didn't cough it up as Belisari is there again. Third down, five yards to go, four, six yards to go, or four yards to go, whatever it was. He was trying to run the trap up inside. Usually a very clean exchange. This time it wasn't a clean exchange. Guard pulls off there, and he turns up in the hole, bobbles it just a little bit. Fortunately, linebacker step in, step up in there and make the play. All right, Binion has returned, and Demetrius Stanley will attempt to give the Buckeyes outstanding field position, trailing by seven here in the third quarter. This time they don't put good the punch. Right. Nice punt. Drive Stanley back to the 43-yard line. He's got a across midfield and down at the 48 yard line for the Buckeyes there is a penalty flag and there's two players tied up back at the 10 yard line now they are separated that was Tyrone Hines 47 along and Grable the there is kid back there that's kid that's a 42 not a 47 excuse me Brent It's a pin, huh? He's getting some points for this one. You have to let him up. See, they can call you for holding. Football player, folks. Football player. <laughs> Does he like the play? Look at that hairdo. So let's have our big eight officiating crew get this all sorted out now. Receiving team, 15 yard penalty, first down. What we saw down there wasn't a personal foul. We just saw the tail end, of course. Well, tomorrow night on ABC, the new year starts with new episodes of Roseanne and Tony Danza in Hudson Street, then another great hour of comedy with home improvement and coach John Stossel takes a look at the trouble with lawyers An ABC news special all tomorrow night here on ABC Joe Hollis over there with Bobby Hoyne and I guess the key question here is whether or not Vrabel has been tossed out of the game John Chavis, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee, has done a good job of moving that secondary around, showing the coverage or giving them a look and then changing the look prior to the snap. And not playing the same coverage two snaps in a row. Awfully good defensive signal call going on. Now they show it too deep. Stem the front. Swing. George. 32 yard line on first down. Gain of about four yards. See, normally, game plan wise, they swing George to the strong side of the field. They were going to switch that up and swing him back to the weak side of the field or the weak side of the formation. That's the first time we've seen that today, Britt. But I know that's a game plan change, just breaking the tendency and getting the ball to George. They look that they treat that like an outside sweep. Certainly appears to be ready to come back into the game. Hands. 
out yeah, they midfield, should. and it is first down for Ohio State. They really should, and in game plan preparation, they plan to attack the inside of the coverage just a little bit more than they have. Maybe here in the third quarter, we'll see them getting into the deep, uh, deeper part of the game plan with the weather improving just a little bit, but he has been open a number of times in there. Should not pass the tight end up. He's too good a football player. First and down. front for the volunteers they're moving it now see they're showing the front and then changing it off the play fake little trying to get at it point has to step away but it was little who set it up and duff cleaned it up but contribute that sack to Little. Came from the outside and forced Hoyne to step right into the heart of the pressure. He is so quick, as we've talked about earlier in the broadcast. He's on a young sophomore offensive lineman, Eric Golston, and without help, if he's really jetting, it is really Second tough. Under. Here it is right here. Here's the tackle responsible for blocking him right here. You Boy, I'll tell you, you got to nail him. Oh, they turn the tight end out of him. Tight end is not going to block him. They're not normally a pass protector. See, they kept the tight end and, and blocked away from him. So he's trying to fake the run all the way, get the safety up there. That's a mismatch in pass rusher, now tight end blocker. checks into the game, and they split him with George, and Hoyt will slip out to the back down to the cupboard, going down. Nothing doing that time, and the Tennessee defensive front is taking charge here as the field begins to dry out. And, and Bobby is not being able to, Hoyne is not being able to throw on his setup. The coverage is taking it away downfield. Hoyne will drop straight back. He'll get back there in a five-step drop plant. He's used to being able to throw. He can't throw. Actually, he should not have started to flush out of there. He caused that sack. He had good protection inside. He should have stayed there. 42 sacks, a new school record, as we mentioned earlier. Third down. Rushing four. This time he hangs. Good job up. by Dudley again, but Dudley is free of a tackle. Can't get the first down. He is down at the 44-yard line, about three and a half yards short of the first down. And that was Noel, the free safety, who brought him down. These Tennessee safeties have played well so far, but every time that ball's gotten in their area and they had to come up and make the play, they've made the play. Biggest difference defensively, the safeties in this game. So far, two big plays against the Buckeyes. There was no safety to clean up on Graham, remember? And here, Noel is able to stop a tight end, a big, rugged tight end from making the first down. Now Bartholomew will punt it again. The defensive back fair, gonna let this one, it's gonna be downed. And it will go into the end zone. The Buckeyes couldn't hang on that time. Finkus was downfield, had it at the two yard line, and it simply squirted away from him into the end zone. Actually, he could have let the ball die. I don't think it would have gone in, Brent. You be the judge. You be right. We'll be back. <laughs> ABC Sports coverage of the 1996 Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl. Brought to you by Comp USA. With over 5,000 computer products, CompUSA is the computer superstore. And the new Dodge, we're thinking ahead. Happy New Year, everybody, with Jack Arut and Dick Vermeil. I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along from Orlando, Florida. Rained hard, can't get over how this field drained here today. Tennessee leading Ohio State. 14-7. The score obviously being kept down because of the rain. Receivers have dropped the slippery ball in the first half. Kent goes up. Not this time. Had a 47-yard touchdown. Yanks this one down for 19 yards and another volunteer first down. Let's take a look at Manning's throwing style. Coach? He's a quick deliver guy. He sets up quickly. He's up on his toes early and he pushes that ball up as soon as he sets up. See those steps? He sets up, moves those feet, fires the ball. The corner rolled up and the safety tried to roll over there to make the play, but they threw the ball too quickly in between the rolled up corner and the safety. Here's a comparison of the two guys. Yards wise, not far off. Completions really favor Manny. Manny's been sacked twice. Hoyne's been sacked three times. And 
Manning leads, though, in touchdown passes with that big play. Graham is brought down in a hurry by Finkus. And you know, Finkus has stepped up, too. He and Vrabel are causing a lot of trouble along that front for the Tennessee offensive line. And it has been the big play in this game, which has been the difference. Those two guys are so quick. And they're both back next year. They like to get in the backfield. Plus, they're playing the kind of defense where they're turned loose. They have gap responsibilities, and they go to the gap full speed. I'll be surprised if we don't see some more draws. Here is Peyton Manning, a sophomore. He'll be one of the leading contenders for the Heisman Trophy. He took over this team last year, beat out Brandon Stewart, who transferred to Texas A&M. Watch now as Peyton tries to set the screen, and he'll throw it away at the feet of the screen man. A very smart move by Peyton Manning. I want to tell you, Jack Aroot, he came here with the IQ of a quarterback genius, didn't he? He had a lot of help, you know, think about it. <laughs> I mean, Archie Manning, an NFL all-star, you know, I mean, everything that Archie's done. But let me tell you about the first time that Peyton got in the huddle. They were getting creamed, Tennessee was. Jerry Colquitt went down in the UCLA game. Peyton walked in. He says, guys, I'm just a freshman, but if you trust in me, I'll take you down the field and we'll get back in this game. A big, ugly tackle said, shut up and just call the play. He said, yes, sir, and he never talked in the huddle again. <laughs> hey, Jack, it's a better story when you tell us what the linemen really said. <laughs> It's a family show. <laughs> He's audibling right there. Now Manning. Down the middle. Nash incomplete. Good job by Kelly. That's a good safety play. Ball almost batted over there to Anthony Gwynn. And he went to the right place. He read the coverage. He set up nicely. They saw the double zone. They took the slot and moved him right down in the hole. Did a nice job of throwing the ball there. But good safety play. Good safety play. Looked like a little early safety play to me, Coach. I don't know. Really? But I think he was collapsing the leg <laughs> a little bit early. I'm not. Maybe, well, what the heck. It was a short night last night. I can't see. Now here comes Binion. Stanley to the middle in the 32 yard line and they came in late didn't they? Boy, do, they pushed? do they cover the punt and the kickoff well 5.7 yard average yard per punt return all season good coaching good emphasis Dan Brooks coaches their special teams at Tennessee and he's doing a nice job the punter is cooperating as well he's getting the ball up there good hang time giving the coverage people time to get under it. the Mercedes championships the final round next Sunday on ABC Three Eastern time. That looks like Jack Aroot's old hat. <laughs> Here's First the down, I've been down. For. I've been Two waiting. tight ends and one running back. I've been waiting for this formation. George slipping See, makes his way to the 39 yard line. The advantage of that formation Brent is they can check with me and run maybe to the little softer phase uh, of the defense not that they're going to play dead over there but Ohio State has done that real well all year and I have been waiting for him to get to that set. So is Cooper. <laughs> Hardy Hine, 30 touchdowns, Manning 22, Perry Glenn 17, a lot of scores. And, down. and George to the middle. Maybe just a little short of that first down, depending on where they spot the ball here. That time they had the tight end. Dudley back off the ball as a wing and he led through on Jesse Sanders and Sanders did a real nice job of stepping up in the hole. As they come across here to measure we notice also that little has taken himself out of the game he was shaken up. You can see that they are short. Yeah, now the coach's box is play. <laughs> the coach's box is right on this side. So obviously the Ohio State fellows are aware that little is out, but in this short yardage situation, you see a little bit of pain down there. The, uh, the medical staff apparently looking down one of his legs down there. But Brown has come into a short yardage situation. 
Number 91 gives him a little more bulk in that defensive line. Yeah, he's 245 pounds, Brent. He's got a little more bulk on him. He may be bigger than that by the end of the season here. Wants a little help. Buckeyes, this is the 11th time they've come to the line on a third down. They've made only two previously. If they threw a play action pass, they had everybody up there committed. They hey, had coach, if they'd have thrown a play action pass, they might have thrown an incompletion. <laughs> yeah, they might have, but they might have hit a touchdown. That's the chances you take when you call third and short passes. Then you go for it on fourth down. But uh, I'm going to give you a headset to the coaches down on the field. <laughs> they wouldn't listen to me. They're too good of coaches. <laughs> Here's Mr. Little getting his leg worked on. Notice they didn't hand the ball off deep to the tailback that time. Changing up the little simple sneak play. They didn't get it. This is fourth down in inches. They did not get this, and Cooper can't believe it. Now this is decision time here. This is decision time. He can't believe they didn't make that. He's going to go for it. Now it's the critical call. So Troy Aikman brings him to the line of scrimmage. Emmett Smith, no, wait a minute. <laughs> he might try a long Bobby count Hoy try to draw him offside. With Sula and Hoy will keep it again and get it. That's right, Smith. You've been watching too much football. They didn't even play this weekend. <laughs> that's the only. That's the only reason you didn't see him play, too. I know. <laughs> they will show up against the Eagles. Actually. Yeah. Oh yeah, they know they will. Hey, <laughs> how about those Eagles, buddy? Was that a shocker? Shocked you? Oh yeah, I would have never get. I was just thought they could play him real tough, you know. And, and if the quarterback Pete comes up with a game, you never know. And he came up with a game. how tough it is. <laughs> Folks, what's interesting is we come to the end of the third quarter. It's 14-7, and let's remember that there is a tiebreaker in bowl games. It's already been used so far during this sequence, and it does change coaches' thinking. If they score a touchdown late and go for the one or two, they will be looking for overtime. Boy, they're That's up there. still far down the road for us. Now it is a first down, and Hoyne is motioning to Glenn that he's got fair on him on that side. Point is looking down to the outside. Throws to the sideline. Glenn working the sideline. Beautiful. Holy man. And what a tell great you, Hoyne catch. picked it up. He pointed at him and he said, We're going to eat him up on that side. That is a big time move. That's a post corner move. And he says, I can't believe that guy was in bounds. But it was quarter quarter coverage over there. The tight end took the safety out of there. He makes a little post move in here. He comes back outside. But even more spectacular is the catch. Beautiful job. He got both feet in just as if he's playing in a Sunday. 17-yard gain. Wow. Now you know why he was the Blitnikoff winner. Here's the formation. Two tight ends. Now he goes check with me and runs to the weakness. What he thinks is the weakness. Maybe going to throw against this front. He is. Look out. Black side. Gets it off. Tillman, his first reception of the game. Still battling to the 33-yard line. In game plan, Brent, they're tying a quick pass audible in with some first down runs from certain formations, and they were loaded up there in an eight-man front, and he had to get the ball off quickly. We see that Little has returned to the game. He got hit from behind. Good thing he got it off quickly. See, eight guys up there coming after you. A little tougher. To, you can't take much time. And now Jenkins is taking himself out. Ooh. Johnson replaces him on the corner. He's just a and sophomore. right away, they line up Glenn against him. He's up against 34. They were running that time. The Buckeye assistant coaches didn't see it yet. That's a first down as Eddie George runs out of bounds at the 28-yard line. And the assistant coaches don't realize 
with all the folks down there in front of the Tennessee sideline that Jenkins has taken himself out of the game. Steve Johnson hasn't played that much football all year, Brent. He's got a, he's a great athlete, good speed, runs on the, the college relay team and all those kind of things, but that doesn't mean he can cover Terry Glenn out there. He's looking at him right now. Safety help from Austin, it appears. Here comes Glenn on the end around, and it's red brilliantly that time by Sanders. Great discipline. Great discipline. Linebacker coach coordinator John Chavis is going to be really proud of that one. They've been running flow, running strong side. They start it to the left side of your screen. Get the flow here. See, they get it going to the left side. He hands it back. Here comes Saunders, 22. Pow, makes a tackle. And we'll be back with the final 15 after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Close by is Daytona Beach. And the other night, our guy, Fireball Jack Aroot, put the hammer down over here in a celebrity race. Ladies and gentlemen, watch this. I mean, my man's bringing it. Come on, Ed. Look at him, Dick. What is that? Didn't he tell us he won the thing? He's in fourth place there. Look at There's two white cars in front of him. Oh, folks. Oops. oops. There it is. Good the, driving, Jack. The <laughs> racing wall of shame for <laughs> Crash Aroot. <laughs> oh, man, guys, go easy. Look. Here's my tutor, two-time Daytona 500 winner, Sterling Marlin. He's working the sidelines here for Tennessee, the Volunteers. What advice can you give me about my driving career, Sterling? What else, saw, you better stick to football. <laughs> That's it. I'm out of here. Uh, uh, happy New Year to him, too. Well, there's some great fans among football and stock car racing down here in the southeast. Now, the Buckeyes trailing it as we start the fourth quarter. Here comes the blitz. Picked up. Point goes, but he overthrew... They missed Glenn the audible in situation. The audible was not picked up. I don't think the receiver saw him. No. There. Yeah, Bobby wanted to go deep. See, they showed an eight-man front. They had tight man-to-man -man coverage, and he wanted to go after Deron Jenkins up there at the corner position, Brent. And uh, he went after him, but Terry Glenn didn't. Well, Jenkins was able to check back in the game after he received some medical attention over on that side. Fair is the other cornerback. Noel is out there along with Austin. So the four defensive backs. Uh, you see one of the safeties, Mr. Noel, has played extremely well today. Tillman and Demetrius Stanley. Glenn will come in motion. They put him in motion. Chase with a linebacker. Point over the middle. Got it. Tight end. Touchdown. So Dudley takes it in, and the Bucks are one away from a quick tie. When Glenn went in motion, Brent, the linebackers got a little fouled up. They got a little fouled up. Tight end came off and went down the hole in between the safeties. Somebody blew it. They didn't chuck him on the line of scrimmage when he came off. He'll be to the right side of your screen. The tight end's right here. The motion man's going to the right. See, they turn him loose right down. He gets right down between Noel. Number nine comes over too hard. See, and there he is up in between. He is such a gifted tight end. Well, Dick, you called it. They you said he's been there, and they got to oh, get they the got, ball they to him. They just got to work the ball to him. It's so much easier to see up where I'm standing. Plus, I have no pressure in making the call. <laughs> now, Jackson, this for the tie. So we got a new one in Orlando. The Comp, USA, Florida Citrus Bowl, Tennessee, and Ohio State. Deadlock 14. Glorious weather today for the Rose Bowl game, in which we're about to punctuate one of the dramatic stories in college football today, the saga of the Northwestern Wildcats against USC. Coming next, now again, Brent. Keith, thank you very much. And here in Orlando at the Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl, we are deadlocked at 14. We have 14.48 to go. And there's a young man who began as a basketball player and now is a tight end. And a good one. Nalfa with the ball on the tee. They are a good kickoff return team, as I've said earlier, Brent. A year ago, it was Alabama. Ohio State. Now it is Tennessee with Fair coming out. And Fair 
Turner stumbling to the 29-yard line where Peyton Manning will put it in play. Take one more look at that touchdown. You'll notice Terry Glenn will go in motion here. The linebackers will adjust, but the linebackers make a mistake. Now roll it. Now he starts over. Now you'll end up watching. Freeze it right there. Now you end up with two linebackers out here and no linebacker to help him going down the hole. Touchdown. See that? Mental mistake. Many times motion can do that, especially the young defensive football teams. Yeah, the Buckeyes move a linebacker up on the outside. Oh. Moving across. <laughs> He's such an intense guy. You know who we haven't seen for Tennessee is their speed burning tight end Dustin Moore. Offside. Defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well it began in the rain and now it has resumed raining here in the fourth quarter. Look at all the colors. <laughs> all the parkers and the, the folks from the Buckeyes. Tennessee who have sat here Tennessee's all over day long. Tennessee's on balance line right now too. That's the first time we've seen that. They use the fullback for one of the few times they bring Ford straight through and he is short of the first down that first and five because of the penalty. What was Dave Cutliff the offensive coordinator telling you and I Brent they have a hard time recruiting the fullbacks because they don't get to carry the ball very much. It's the end of the season he's carried the ball 14 times. He's must have thought it was a mistake coming in. Kyler and Nash are off to the right. Kyler's the flyer. Again, they're unbalanced down here to the bottom of the field. If they want to go deep. And uh, Graham for the first down. So the volunteers right now content just to try and keep it moving down the field if they can. Game is tied at 14. We're in the fourth quarter. Remember in bowl games this year, we do go to overtime. And in this overtime, unlike the NFL's version, both teams will handle the ball. They'll start from the 25-yard line with a first down. If you win the flip, the thinking for the coaches is to let the other team have the ball first, then you know what you have to beat. But we're ahead of the story a little bit. Manning. Quickly back now to Kent. Kent is picked up. Brabel was coming. He got away from him and Belisari got him out of bounds at the 45 yard line. So it will now be second down and four. See, they get in that loaded formation to the wide side of the field. More offensive players than they had uh, at any other point there. And they're short players. They bring a guy in motion. See, they're unbalanced up here. Got a guy here, got a guy here. A tight end here, no tight end. They brought the man in motion and try to run the screen over to the weak side of the defense, hoping that you overshift it. They get the offensive lineman out there, but Bolisari 30 flashes from the right side of your screen and makes the play. Most of the ball games have been high-scoring affairs, but not this one. 28 total points here. And this is Graham being stretched out. Delisari and Kelly coming over to help out. And I believe he is out short of the first down. Kelly doing a good job coming up from that safety position inside out with the speed of a Graham. You better take the right angle or you aren't going to make the tackle. Kelly's not the fastest guy in the world. Very smart player. But you have to take the right approach to tackle this young man. The coaches say Manning is the most studious quarterback they've ever had. They said his notebook week to week in preparation is thicker than their offensive notebooks that the coaches have. He just studies this game every time he gets a chance. Third down and one and more the tight end switches over to the left side. So double tight end formation in this short yardage and Graham will have the hole down and steps lively to the 44 yard line Winfield. You know, that was a good description, Brent. Step slightly. Did you see him step over that? He doesn't even slow down. Good agility. He's going to be a fine back next year. Only had 1,400 this year. Watch him step lively right there. Good job. You know, good running backs don't always see those guys coming inside out. They sense them. Twelve and a half minutes, plenty of time. Tennessee patiently bringing the ball down the field now on the Buckeye defense. Fake, Manning, middle, got 
Kent bounces free and down at the 23 yard line. First down, Volunteers. He was shaken up on the tackle. He's a tough guy. You know, when you run those kind of fakes, and the best place to throw the ball after a fake is down in front of the fake, and that's exactly what they do. Now, they fake here, try to freeze coverage here, and they bring the wide receiver into the area. Nice design on the play. Now, there's a good strong fake. Look at the linebackers. They suck up inside. Now they throw right behind the faking area. Good design by the offensive coaches. Good catching by wide receivers, Joey King. Buckeyes on defense without Sean Springs, their leading defensive back. Manning again fakes, fires wide open as Nash, who slipped. He is down at the 17-yard line, but that's a gain of a good, strong six yards. See, David Cutliff is going into the other phase of his game plan now, using a little more play action, but just quick play action and then getting the ball out. That time, they fake the ball off, tackle the freeze, the outside coverage of guy, and throw it toward the sideline. Try to get a step for the receiver, and that's exactly what they did. Now with the rain coming down again as it had much of the day. Second down for Manning. As he changes it up, taking a look at the defense. Graham close to the first down. You know, the Buckeyes in the Big Ten were the fourth best defensive team in the conference, but inside the red zone, Brent, they did not play well. They defensed 34 series down there, and they gave up 25 touchdowns. That's too many. They've got to evaluate what they're doing with the defense down there. Maybe be more aggressive. If you're going to score anyway, go after them. 139 yards, like we said earlier in the broadcast. They don't lose when he goes for over 100. 11-0 coming in here. One of the things that I offer about the... Buckeye defense, Dick, and I know I know it's an excuse, and we're long past when anybody should be offered excuses for him. But both Styles and Powell would be starting at linebacker if they had oh, not gone man. to the NFL early. Well, that would have kept Belisari out of the middle. He was simply the best of their linebackers, so they try to surround him in the middle. Michigan fully realized that, that they were probably undermanned, and now Kent getting some medical treatment. And now it is third and very short. for the first down so isn't it interesting that here we are with this year's Heisman Trophy winner Eddie George of Ohio State and next year when the season starts there will be a lot of hype surrounding this young man and a fellow quarterback in the Southeastern Conference Danny Werfel I'm sure that Danny and many of the Gators and Nebraska players both watching I just want to wish both of those fine teams a lot of luck when they go at it for the national championship. That is going to be a whale of a football game. Both extremely well coached. They do different things. They're playing over in the Fiesta Bowl, and it's nice to see it come down to a one versus two, and uh, good luck to both those great teams. Now, it is Manning off a of fake. Wobbler is caught over here on this side, and out of bounds by Kyler at about the eight-yard line. They're staying with that principle of quick play action to try to keep people inside, in position, and then get the ball out quickly. Not a big, long, slow, deliberate play fake. Just a very quick acknowledge the running back and get the ball outside. Now that I've been a nice guy, who do you like in that game, Florida or Nebraska? I'll tell you, I like Nebraska. Not that I like them. I think they're the better team. No, I find that interesting. Second down. Thought you might. <laughs> <laughs> Pfeiffer was going to start motion, stopped, came well, back, and now the right. They had all kinds up. of guys going were, on that one. They were really loused up on that play. I mean, they that were, was they, a bummer. They were listening to us. That was, <laughs> <laughs> Just like, you what the guy said? Yeah. Come on, you can't beat the Southeastern yeah. Conference. Come on, give me the floor you. Well, I'll start. Offense. Five yard yeah. penalty. Repeat second down. This is the Keystone Cops play here. You go. No, I'll go. No, you go. He had a lot of different guys starting to move here. Pfeiffer starts to move, and he says, oh, no, wait. You st I'll stay here. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it was something. You know, but you and I saw Nebraska and agreed they were a real fun football. We didn't see Florida, but last year, defense, Florida's defense last year, I don't think would be good enough to stop Nebraska's offense this year, and they say their defense isn't as good as it was last year. Zone. Down goes Brutus. I mean, Brutus.
Brutus took a wallop. Look at him, but, he, but he's a tough, Brutus is a tough guy. He yeah. spikes it. Not too much celebrating, Brutus. Yeah. Here he is up at the top of your screen. Here's, here, here he is right there. Get it, Brutus. Boom. He gives him a shot. That's the first hit he got all year. It's been a tough year for mascots. Yeah, a couple of guys have gotten a few uh, fist fights. Have yeah, they not? Well, there were some injured mascots. No, we got a couple of this. Husband and wife over there. Four and a half minutes to go. Third down. Penalty has brought the ball back to the 13-yard line. They're audibly a new joint can't into a position to block. Graham picks up the blitzer. They lob. The receiver fell down. They're outsmarting themselves on this series, Brent. The one thing that the Buckeyes have done down here, Bill Young has changed up his defense and sh shows a pressure look, and they're audibling and screwing themselves up. Now we come to perhaps the most important field goal as Jeff Hall comes into the game. You see, here comes the blitz, and they've got a pressure coming us, and they slip and fall down going to the corner pattern. Now, Jeff Hall, let me tell you this, warming up down on the field in the rain earlier, he slipped a couple of times. It is tough for a kicker to plant his leg. Watch as he plants now. Price will hold for him. He's four for nine from this distance this year. He got yeah. this one up, and as a result, the 29-yard field goal puts Tennessee up. 17-14. Buckeyes turn. Lots of time left. We'd like to welcome two new affiliates that joined the ABC Television Network this morning. They are WGNO-TV ABC 26 New Orleans and WPGA-TV Channel 58 of Macon, Georgia. Happy you folks are with us in the new year and for many more to come. Nice to have you with us. I think you noticed those gloves as we came out. The return men for Ohio State have taken the gloves off now. Imagine by now they're pretty, pretty soggy. And the uh, short man, Hauser, making the fair catch. And uh, that was the pile over there. Let's check. Eddie George still has them on. Glenn has changed and putting on a dry pair. That's what it probably is, as they've gone to some dry gloves now. It's 17 14. Volunteers lead it by three. So on that other side, of course, with that leather, they'd have to take them off and put dry ones on. Two tight ends again, Brent. They put Glenn over here on fair. George, of course, the running back, as he has been all game, his last one for Ohio State. See, when you get in two tight ends, you force the front to remain stable. And the offensively you can look up there and you can see which gap you want to attack, which offensive linemen have the easiest blocks, and then the run that way. So far, every time they've been in that formation, they've advanced the football, either running or passing. That's one disadvantage of the, the defenses as played by Tennessee and Ohio State. Those two tight ends foul you up a little bit. Second down and two for the Bucks. See, they're shifted up to the top of the field. Now they might slant back. George cut off. Makes the most of it. See, He's become a much more patient runner as he matured at Ohio State. See, in my opinion that time, Brent, he ran into the strength of the defense. The defense was moved over. See, here's one down lineman, two down lineman, three down lineman, only one on this side. Last time they ran here and made nine yards. For some reason, he ran right back into the strength of that defense. Good defense right there by Jeff Coleman, 92. First down. Ohio State trailing 17-14. Bobby Hine, what a winner. 30 wins, six losses, one tie in his career. Has he done the job? A number of fine school records. Four season records, two career records. 
Jenkins and Glenn and now Glenn will come in motion. They're going to chase with Jenkins this time. And George pounds to the middle and the 43 yard line. See there they try to stretch you with that motion but move it over there loosen that corner and then run the fullback up inside on the linebacker and Sualua is going out now Matt Calhoun coming in at fullback and that's a loss because Sualua is the best blocking fullback in the country something's wrong with him being a Samoan he might like this kind of way well Eddie George and wasn't he a happy young man as he sets in behind Calhoun when they announced his name as the winner of the Heisman Trophy and the winner also there at the downtown athletic club Tennessee's got it. Brent, they crowded eight people up there. They knew where they were going to run. You get a tight end, split end flanker offense, the strength of the running formations to the tight end side. They loaded up over there. They had too many people. They got penetration. They got the turnover. You see what I'm talking about? The left top of your screen there. See a lot of orange jerseys in there. A lot of people getting in there after the ball. And the guy that really got in there and penetrated was Tyrone Hines, the inside linebacker. They brought him up inside the hole. Gallion, their leading tackler, recovered the fumble. And there is an injured volunteer. Now the storyline. 7.35 remaining in the fourth quarter of this Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl. Tennessee with a three-point lead, 17-14. And somewhat derisively, I can hear a few Tennessee fans chanting, Eddie, Eddie. And Hines, who stripped that ball, is being assisted off the field. What they do now is they move outside linebacker Craig King inside to play in his spot. He plays both positions. Here he is in the middle of your screen. See, they brought him in the backside hole. Here he comes, and he comes around the back point, and he comes in and strips it, gets it from behind. Someone else got the helmet on the ball, and it's loose in the turf. Eddie George has only fumbled four times all year. Nash is the slot man for Manning. Big to Graham. Middle incomplete. Nash should have had the ball. Got away from him, and then the Buckeyes had a chance for an interception, and Gwynn could not come away with it. That's a great example of how quickly Manning can set up after play action. He will make a play action fake. Concentrate on the quarterback now. Set up, set up, raise the arm, boom! He just zips that thing right where he has to throw it, but the receiver doesn't acknowledge it. He lets it go. Boy, he has a nice, quick, short push delivery. Second down and ten. Another play action fake. Coming to the right. Brable in pursuit. Incomplete. Brable in hot pursuit and Manning unloads. It's third and ten. How many times have we said Brable and Finkus? Boy, were those guys humming. They were coming around after him. He could feel it. They sure play hard. He is a leading candidate for the Outland, the Lombardi, whatever you name it next year. I mean, okay. Mr. Brable is going to be a preseason cover boy somewhere, and Finkus is a player, too. He's also going to be a doctor. I think I'd like him working on my knee, wouldn't you? <laughs> you trust those guys been banging those helmets? <laughs> he's, he's intense, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Third down and ten now for the Volunteers who lead it by a field goal. Big defensive down. Changing the coverage around now. Stun it inside. And Graham steps away from the first tackler, but he's not going to get the first down. The call doesn't work, and the Volunteers now will be pooch punting. See, they ran the stunts up inside. The cross-charge stunts are really good on, on, on drawdowns. You don't draw them upfield. You've got people cross-charging. Many times you can get into the backfield quickly. It'll be from the right side. You'll see the there's the outside priest right there. You see him come from the outside, him to the inside. He's right in that draw hole. Binion. Oh, what good running ability. Can he make you miss in a short area? Big play coming up right here. 6.45 to go. Stanley is back deep. Now remember the Buckeyes have already blocked one punt today, which set up a touchdown. Oh, nice poacher. He really popped that Got up. Fair catch, Stanley. Tough weather, and a penalty flag comes down. You got to give him six feet. 
Pro football, if there's no distance, you have to give them. You just have to allow them to catch it. College football, you've got to give them six feet. That's hard, though, when you're fair catching and moving forward, and the defense is coming after you. Let's see what they've called. Five yards. Buffer for goal. Interference. First down. You have to be courageous to make that one. And we're going to take a break. And when we come back, there will be 6.29 to go with Tennessee leading Ohio State by a field goal. ABC Sports coverage of the 1996 Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl brought to you by Comp USA. With over 5,000 computer products, Comp USA is the computer superstore. Digital Equipment Corporation, digital, whatever it takes. Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth, and Microsoft, where do you want to go today? Final 629, Tennessee with a three-point lead, and the Buckeyes with the ball. First down at the 20-yard line. And he'll throw it on first down, Hoying to the middle, and Dudley's there to the 41 and 21 yards. That was a real good call. Tennessee has been coming with a two deep uh, safety coverage, rolling up the corners. They call that, I think, in the huddle, anticipating the two deep. They get it. The play action fake makes it easy for the tight end to get off. See the safety here? They have a safety back over here. He comes off and gets right in that hole. That play action fake is really tough, and no one really does a good job of holding him up. Plus, it's a nice throw thrown to a gifted athlete. Couldn't get a handle on it. Austin, the safety, in pursuit of him as the ball was thrown a little bit too far away from him. As a coach, you would tell Bobby Hoying in these situations, Brent, he had a receiver wide open short in a layoff position to go ahead and take that rather than throw the low percentage pass. Hines is being taped. Our attendance today. And it's outstanding. Consider the weather we've had today. 70,797. That's the 14th sellout in the last 16 games here. The Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl. And he's got the other tight end who's out of bounds. At the 46-yard line, using Hauser as a receiver now. He has gone from Dudley to Hauser. And, of course, Dudley reminds us that we've got a college basketball schedule coming your way on ABC. You know, Saturday, it returns to the network. The UCLA Bruins, the defending champions, face Arizona. For our West Coast viewers, Duke battles Virginia, or George Washington takes on Missouri. Regional action on Payne Weber College Basketball Saturday, January 13th at 2 Eastern. Big third down conversion play here. Bluffing blitz inside. Coin going to run for it, slides, and he's short of the first down. He did make a nice tackle. He is short as Sanders again makes a big play for the Volunteers. And boy, is he quick at accelerating once he decides where he's going. He has speed. All these Tennessee kids on defense have speed. He just flashes into plays. Dick, have you noticed how partial the directing is today. How many more orange shots we've seen than red? Well, you know, bam, he's like you sitting there wearing that purple hat. You're wearing with Mr. Bill Webb down there. Bill Webb, there you are, director. He's, he's a volunteer. A old huh? volunteer grad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's nice to have you along. And Kimberly Belton, your producer, will take you home 512. Kim Belton read that story about that imposter at Texas. He thinks about going back and playing a little hoop someplace. Yeah. Just change his name. Yeah, well, he could get into Stanford easy, couldn't he? <laughs> oh, no, no. You got to go to a different school. Got to go to a different school. You don't understand. Yeah, yeah, might as well. You don't understand. Yeah. Did you ever have any of those guys? Just we've got a time out here. No, I really didn't. No, I tried to get a couple of them eligible a few times. <laughs> now, 
That's an amazing story. That is an amazing story. And, and you know what the coach's comment was? Gee, I'm really surprised he was such a mature young man. <laughs> Folks, in case you haven't read, and I hate to laugh about it, I, I hope there's no problem, but the young man played in a couple of uh, junior colleges, I guess out in California someplace, one of them in Salinas, coach, is that where the one was? And then uh, it's raining. That's why I'm wearing a hat, folks. <laughs> so, listen, I love the Trojans. You know what I mean. Anyway, and then he goes to the University of Texas yeah. under a third name, and he plays, and somebody publishes a picture out west, and they say he's a 30-year-old <laughs> vagabond defensive back. I say he likes to play. Oh, yeah. yeah that's give him credit. <laughs> well, Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah. And coming up next, the Rose Bowl, Keith Jackson. Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan out in Pasadena, the granddaddy. Never thought, Mr. Vermeil, that you and I would be saying that any day. Coming up next, Northwestern in the Rose Bowl. You uh, would expect USC, but oh, you would yes, not sir. expect Northwestern. Yeah, John Robinson, great bowl game coach. Yeah. Yeah, he's had success. You bet. Big, giant play. Here we go, folks. Let's sit up here and second guess this fourth down call. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to wait until you do it first. 5-12 <laughs> now. Three-point lead. It comes down to a huge one for the Bucks. They're loaded up there with eight people. Oh, Ooh, it's off top. Calhoun's head. Tennessee's got it. They were running the option, and they hit the fullback in the helmet with the full football. Cooper says, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. He no, wraps it up. The fullback should be up front of that tailback, out front of him, and he pitches it behind him. He goes down the line of scrimmage right here. Now, the fullback is here. He comes here. Now he goes down the line of scrimmage. He flips it out there and flips it right into Sua Lua. Oh, he hit Calhoun. Oh, it's Calhoun, 39. Excuse me. Good pickup, Rick. Another look at it. Now he's going to run the option to the right side of your screen. That's on Bobby Hoying. He didn't flip with his eyes first. See, you've got to look where you're flipping. Three turnovers to Tennessee one. That stat's going to hold up, Brent. First down. Now Graham hurdling a would-be defender to the 39-yard line. And here we go. Dick, I want to go back to the option play because you and I were there when it happened. It was against the University of Michigan when they ran it. I'm trying to think. First a few years ago. Yeah, a few years ago. That time when they ran it. And I guess my only question to you is, if you're not an option running team, might have been team, fried. Fried. When you're not an option team, do you come up with it at that moment to try it? I guess it doesn't make any difference. You should be able to run it. Huh? Go ahead, Coach. <laughs> I don't. I don't. You wouldn't run that. You'd get that ball. Yeah, see, they were in the hands, formation. They load were... up with Sualoa and two tight ends, and let's get after it. They were in the tackle over formation. And that was the play they had to run back away from the tackle over formation. Every time they've been in the tackle over, for over formation, they've ran behind the tackles, the two big tackles. So they, they go over there. They were going to run over there, or at least give them the picture they were going to run over there, get the defense to slide that way, and run the option. Now, let me ask you this. How about a play fake to Eddie George and throw the ball to the tight end? Probably a touchdown. Probably a touchdown. Though. But to see, it's fourth down and a yard and a half to go. You're really thinking this situation with three. It was that time, four okay. minutes or so, you're going to try to make the first down. All right, now let's come back because there's still plenty of time. There's third down now for Tennessee. They need to reach the 36-yard line. Manning throws it, and it's incomplete, and now it's fourth down. They're at the 41, and I don't believe Fulmer can gamble at all. He can't oh, afford no. it. Here comes the funny team. Benyon will attempt to, to pooch it right now, and, and the Buckeyes will get it right back. But they will have given up at least 30 yards in real estate here. Yeah. You, you've heard me so many times, and I'm not saying I'm right when I say this, but it's a principle I always coach with. When you're in trouble, it's not so much what play you call. It's the person you give the ball to. If you've got a great football player, give the ball to your great football player. Now, they tried that in fourth and inches, and it didn't work. So, they try something else. All right, here we go. Stanley is back. Another big punt. Bucks trying to get some pressure on. He hangs this one high. Stanley, another fair catch. Very sure-handed after a shaky first half on a punt and a kickoff return. The ball now is at the 18-yard line. So when you come back, 3.27 to go. 17-14. Volunteers. <laughs> 
327 and remember the Buckeyes have used a timeout in this half. They have two timeouts left. They need a field goal to get this game into overtime. A touchdown, of course, to possibly win it. Now Fudd is the long man. Josh Jackson is their normal kicker. Coin middle. George, that was wide open. And George is to the 24-yard line. You know, they've started out successfully getting the ball to Ricky Dudley. You know, he's been getting in there, but this time what they do, they don't go to the double zone, plus they work Dudley over as he comes off the line of scrimmage. He's not going to get in there cleanly anymore. The linebacker's going to tap to him just a little bit. Here he comes over, now. boom, he hits him. Now the other one gets rights in his face. They aren't going to let him down that hole again. Pearson into the backfield. Point. A one hopper incomplete. For the boy was a nice the ball was a nice tight spiral, but he just threw that in accurately all the way. Third and three. Boy, these calls get tougher as you go, boy. In the game in the fourth quarter, this you've, you've, you've gone through a lot of your game plan. comes out to the left. Fair takes him. Jenkins watching Tillman. Point intercepts. No! He dropped it. Incomplete. Ball was on the ground. Should have been intercepted by Austin. He had it all the way. That's that quarter coverage. He was sitting in there, sitting in that zone, just waiting, waiting, waiting. He turned back to the inside on that turn in. He fired a beautiful throw. But Austin was right there playing inside out. Now, perhaps the most critical call of the game. See, he gave him a little pump fake. He didn't see him. When that pump fake, he pulled him right back into it. Fourth down. Buckeyes need three yards. Showing double zone, Grant. Double man. He can't run for it. That's Not an eligible man. man. Lost it down. That's an ineligible man, baby. Hey, if you're going to go down, go down trying. That's what he did. Never take a sack on fourth down when you're behind. The end of the game. I tell you, it was a real good change-up call. They showed a double zone, but they turned it man underneath. They worked the tight end over viciously coming off the line of scrimmage. He couldn't get clean. Good pressure. Good defensive call by the coordinator, John Chavis. What's that flag doing down here? An eligible receiver, right? Yeah, yeah, I would guess so. Illegal touching. Oh, oh sit down. Five yard penalty. Lost it down. First down. Here's the whole deal. Now you'll note to the left side of your screen, the tight end coming off there, the linebacker, wham, he takes a piece of it right there. See, he took him away from it right here. He's away from it. No place to go there. Now he's working to the outside. He couldn't get it. They were doubled out there. Now he finds the guy in one-on-one -on -one coverage. LaShawn Daniels was one-on-one -on -one coverage that time. <laughs> Coach Cooper can't believe it. Well, the memories of this season for these guys yeah. on this game right now off the fullback's helmet and a fourth down pass to alignment to a guard. He was, he was open. <laughs> that's, that's, a tough tough memory. Memory. Yeah, that's a tough memory for the seniors especially. 233 for an outstanding football team and a heck of a season. A lot of these Tennessee players are back. Now Manning He's going. lobs one up over Howard and Kent couldn't get it. It'll be second down and Manning was going for the juggler here at the end with 2.29 remaining in regulation and the volunteers yeah. up by three. You know, I, you know, I'm conservative, as you know, but why not eat up some clock time? You throw that out there, it's picked off and goes the other way, you lose the football game, you know? One thing is being wide open, but wow, I think that's a little bit on the risky side. Second down and 10. Here's what to do. Get him two tight ends. Balance up that front and get after him. Here he 
comes Mr. Graham. He'll go down at the 20 yard line and the clock continues to tick away. Remember now the Buckeyes have two timeouts left and also remember one of the big differences between the college game right now and the NFL is the fact that clock is not going to stop at the two minute warning. So Cooper and the Buckeyes will use one of their timeouts right now. That gives us an opportunity to send you all to John Saunders. John. Well, Brent, we want to remind everyone that coming up next is the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl, Gary Barnett. Who would have thought that he would have wound up in the Rose Bowl, even though he made the promise when he first took the job? He'll face John Robinson and USC. It's coming up following your game. Right now, Brent, let's take it back to you. Hey, John, do me a favor and tell Coach Barnett not to take that UCLA job when Vermeil offers it tomorrow morning. Yeah. You are a rat. So I'm gonna get ten phone calls. You know. <laughs> uh, tell Carol to put the answering machine out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Holy man, that's not true, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Happy What's New Year, you? Coach. What's the same to you. What? Boy, you could really stir the pot. You know. You aren't getting after some poor coach. You're getting after me. Some poor coach. They make all that money off those tennis shoes. Yeah, not in football. <laughs> What's the most you ever made from a sneaker company, UCLA coach? Uh, my seventh year at the Eagles, I made $5,000 to have all my coaching staff wear Puma. Stop and only you. got 2500 bucks. I never got the other half. Did you lose to the Raiders and the Pumas? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. In fact, my Must fullback had shoe. one Puma and one other shoe on. He had, he had a deal made in the side. But my deal didn't include players. In those days, coaches didn't make any money doing that kind of stuff. That's amazing. In fact, they didn't even wear helmets in those days when I was coaching. <laughs> They're down now for the Volunteers. Oh, nice block. Yeah. Inside the 10 yard line. Big Bubba Miller. We haven't mentioned him today. Started 46 games in his career. This was the 47th start. He pulls at the right guard position that time and he makes a power block. You'll see him in the end zone spot. Here he is right here. He will pull and come through. Follow him and watch a big man make a hit. Boom! Nice job. That's a takedown. State out of timeouts. Back to John in New York. Well, Brent, he didn't win the Heisman Trophy, but if there was a voting for the MVP in college football this year, this guy might have won it. Darnell Autry of Northwestern and Keyshawn Johnson, well, he might be the best receiver in the country. It's coming up, the Rose Bowl, following your game. Brent. Thank you, John. So the granddaddy is next. Rain to Bob and Lena. You know, folks. I have a lot of fun with my partner, Nick Vermeil. Even said so long to him a year ago, and back he came. Couldn't get rid of him that easy, but it was 20 years ago with one of the greatest upsets in the history of the Rose Bowl with UCLA. And remember, that Bruin team had lost during the regular seasons, Ohio State and Woody Hayes, big time. And Dick went there and pulled off the upset 20 years ago Today. for you, Coach. Today. Thank you. I, that, that's a great memory. It's, it's as big a thrill as I've ever had in coaching. My wife says it's still the biggest thrill she's ever had, regardless of going to the Super Bowl. And so now Hall has another one. So now we can forget overtime unless they score a touchdown and miss an extra point, right? <laughs> a 25-yard field goal for Mr. Hall. The Buckeyes are out of timeouts. They're going to need a very efficient drive here. Bobby Hoyne is going to have to step up here, Coach. And he's capable of doing it, but the conditions right now are worse at this time than they were earlier. It is really boring right now. Even if you get a dry ball, by the time you get it back, it's not covered as you drop back there. Water starts accumulating on the ball. It goes through the air to the receivers. It gets wet. The catchers go to catch it and slips out of their hands. They've got to come up with a Buckeye play. Well, I like this volunteer team. You know, I told you earlier this year, I liked them a lot. I know and you did. They went into Florida. You know, I watched them. awful second half. 
I watched them on some game tapes at the end in preparation to do this, and they didn't look real good. And the coaches told us that. They were bored with playing football. You know, I think by the time they got to Kentucky and Vanderbilt, yeah. they just were mailing it in. Yeah. I think Ohio State being in this game helped Tennessee. Yeah, they mentally. said, the coaches said that. They got a yeah. big lift when they found out they were going to get to play a team the caliber of Ohio State. Yeah. And believe me, they're a good football team. I wouldn't be surprised with Peyton Manning coming back and Jay Graham if the volunteers aren't a top five preseason team. Oh, have to be. Yeah. They have to be, Brent. The running back back, the receiver, you got the skilled guys back. You're gonna you're gonna be picked up high. Now Pearson for the Buckeyes. Oh! <laughs> Fumble! Greg King, did he hit him? Now the volunteers are signaling they got it, but they did not. Uh, Buckeyes hold on. What a big moment that is. 157 to go. Boy, when you have speed throughout your squad, your special teams are spe special. And Dan Brooks' special teams at Tennessee are special. Their coverage teams are great. Their return teams are great. And they tackle. <laughs> they explode into the ball carriers. Another look at a real good hit. Oh, oh that's headache. Good players playing inside backer right now. He is normally an outside linebacker, but when Tyrone Hines comes out, he goes in. All right, here we go now. Here we go. First down. Point. Dropped it. George dropped it at the 34-yard line. Second and 10. 153. No timeouts. And if you go back in history, and take a look at Heisman Trophy winners. Frequently, they have had trouble in bowl games. For one thing, they become a huge target. Secondly, they spend so much time celebrating and giving interviews, it's hard to concentrate. But I wouldn't say he had a bad game. I think Graham might have had a little bit better one the other day. So second down and 10. Playing really loose two deep zone right now. Middle, high, third and 10. You know, the secondary is full of speed as well. And they, when the ball gets in the air, they can flash and get there. And then when they get there, they like to hit. Secondary extremely well coached by Kevin Ramsey, the defensive back door coach. Eddie George with a 100-yard day and their first touchdown. So you've got to throw the ball in front of that coverage. It's hard to, especially with that type of pattern. Now, if you're going to go down in between the safeties, you've got to bring the tight end back inside. They did not do that. It was lucky he was not picked. Here is third and ten for the Buckeyes. 147. He got it. Into the hands of the big play wide receiver. A first down Ohio State. Time stops at 139. And Glenn keeps the drive alive. Here he is, one and one. They were in a quarter-quarter zone coverage. No help at all. They're playing him pretty loose. They're going to get him these kind of patterns, but he still reacts up nicely and makes the tackle. Jenkins and, of course, that other field goal giving Tennessee a little cushion now. Buckeyes have to drive for the six. George makes a good catch. George to the 47 yard line and it'll be second down isn't that something isn't that something Eddie George drops a screen pass and it catches a very very difficult pass out there with one hand he is a good receiver he broke the school record for receptions by a running back stretch and catch this is what he does real well look at that reach out there with that left hand the NFL is going to like that second and five for the Bucks. and stand fumble, fumble. the clock at the bottom of the pile is King the Buckeyes are apparently going to lose in an upset when you turn the ball over what do you do coach you lose right it is unbelievable but there's been only one bowl game so far in which that has not been the case and in that particular game now, I should say, we don't know about those two played earlier today, but going into today, the only one was...
Virginia and Georgia, and that was equal. How about in four NFL playoff games? All four. All four. You turn it over, you lose. When two teams are equal, you can't give the opponent anything. Be one of the few teams I've seen win. Good team beat another good team with a block punt. Now you watch Manning. Just take a knee now. is that the Heisman Trophy is not modeled after an option quarterback. <laughs> the agony of that play for the Buckeyes. There's a lot of other plays throughout the ball game that they'll evaluate as being critical and hurting in the overall outcome of this ball game. Sad day for the seniors to finish with two losses in a row. Don't go to the Rose Bowl when they thought they had it made and now lose this. And, and John hasn't had a lot of success in bowl games. Probably no fault of zone, but they haven't beaten many teams. That will do it for Jack Aroot and Dick Vermeil. I'm Brett Musburger. Northwestern and USC, the granddaddy, is up next on ABC.